Okie dokie. Time for day two. Let's enter this draft. Ugh. In a minute or so, we'll give people time to get here. Got my 17 lands up. Got my game in hand, a win rate up. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? I'm gonna be right back. Let's kick things into gear. I did indeed make it, Ms. Tastic. It was a real thrill ride. My, my deck was much better than my opponent's deck, but uh, they did have a Hanukkah Domniathi. And in the last game, they stuck a Cigar's Imprisonment on the uh, Blood Vial Purveyor, which was scary. But uh, even with lots and lots of blood, I also had lots and lots of blood, and my spells were better. And that's all it came down to. Trying to be a good person starting less than a half an hour after it opens, so hopefully we'll actually have time for as many matches as we need to play. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be hard to stop me from wanting to go to a blood-heavy color here. I dreamed that I opened a Holebreaker Horror. We'll see if uh, the dream comes true. Did not open a Holebreaker Horror, the dream did not come true, but Olivia's attendance seems pretty, pretty good. I'm not actually sure if this card is technically better than Voltaic Visionary, I assume it's like quite a bit better than Voltaic Visionary. It's actually really, really close. Super similar game in hand win rate, but...
And then it's still better. Also a bomb. Snap pick. We're probably better than the average player at surviving to turn six, I would hope. Strong pack also. Come on. Get in there. Thank you. Creepy Puppeteer. That also seems pretty good. And certainly none of the other cards in this pack are any good. At least on the Creepy Puppeteer level. So we'll just snap that off. I wonder what someone takes over Creepy Puppeteer. Hmm. Yeah, Puppeteer is not bad. Sitting right there between Cemetery Protector and Dormant Grove. And slightly above Lantern Bearer. Yeah, Puppeteer definitely demands you be a little aggressive, but I think we can pull that off. Goes well with Lantern Bearer. Wow, Hallowed Haunting is actually kind of way up in win rate. I'm surprised. People actually figured out how to play this card. I'm impressed. Yeah, it's even better than Markov Waltzer. Good stuff. Is it now? Okay, well, we got five white cards, several of which are even playable. We also got Chill the Grave, Syncopate, if we want to do blue stuff, but I'm pretty sure this is Lantern Flare. Again, not only going by 17 lands, but Lantern Flare seems pretty strong. I think it's the strongest card in the pack. And all that white is a good sign. We also, yeah, <laughs> if we're in Crimson Vowdraft and we start by taking three rares, we just win automatically, right? This is it. We, we pass the test. It's over. Alright, we'll need to make sure to keep our creature count nice and high. I'm pretty sure I like Fearful Villager much more than I like Nurturing Presence. I still suspect that Nurturing Presence, it still doesn't feel super playable to me, and I'm and definitely not outside of a blue-white. There's also a Siphon Essence here. I don't really see any reason not to just take the Solid Red playable. It's like nothing else in this pack is exceptionally better than it. And it works really well with Creepy Puppeteer. Love my 4-3 Menaces. Alright, speaking of cards that work well with Creepy Puppeteer, we've got Twin Blade Geist here. That card is baller. Congratulations on your VIP status deck list! Welcome to the most exalted status on all of Twitch. I, I kid, but people do tell me that I require... Actually, people tell me I don't require enough points. People tell me to keep the riffraff out sometimes. Nevertheless, decklist, you are never riffraff. Yeah, it is a late lantern bearer, but Twin Blade Geist is, is real strong. Plus, I was inspired by seeing Sam Black run a red-white Olivia's Attendance deck to a 7-2 seven, a seven yesterday. Yes, the riffraff was in the house the whole time. Wow, Lantern Flare is two whole two whole spots better than Kindly Ancestor on the game in hand win rate. 17 lands is so funny. Okay, this pack has not much for anybody. I think Hookhand Mariner looks like the best card here. It's not like it's great, but I think this is better than Ancestral Anger in a red-white deck. I feel like some people would want to take Anger here. I'm not sure that I'm one of those people. I think I'd rather spec on like a very good playable than on... I don't know, Ancestral Anger has always uh, been a bit suspe suspicious for me. But wow, it actually has a fantastic game hand win rate. Alright, let's take Anger, why not? I think we're like almost 100% to be red, I don't mind just taking the good red card. Now there's a Hookhand Mariner, and I think I'm going to take it this time, or I could take Vampire Slayer. We already passed a Mariner. I don't think we're going to need to be in the, like, Vampire Slayer bracket. It's like, it is nice to have two drops. It goes super well with Lantern Flare. It's nice to have stuff that curves into Creepy Puppeteer. It's not terrible, I guess. There are a lot of vampires. We also played against, like, six vampire decks yesterday. 
So perhaps Vampire Slayer actually has a bunch of utility here. It sure does kill vamps. All right, we'll take the two drop. I don't know. I feel like I'm sort of breaking the rule to like stay open in this format, but whatever. We're getting playables. None of the playables are that far off the other playables. And now we get Reckless Impulse. Apparently Deathsea is really into Supernatural Rescue. I learned that watching his stream yesterday, but whatever. Easy Impulse. Also, Pack 8 Lantern Bearer. Good, good job for whoever's in blue. Congratulations, but I'm still pretty happy having Lantern Flare. Yep. Yep, Bopkus. Olivia's attendance into Creepy Puppeteer, which was a good a good thing. And now, Easy Ceremonial Knife. Sporeback Wolf still in the pack. I think we've done a pretty good job cutting white for next pack. Another Sporeback Wolf, a Heron Blessed Geist. Pretty sure this is... Um, I think I'd rather have Knife than Sanctify. Pretty sure we can pick up a Sanctify later. I do like Invitation here more than these these poopers. Invitation is definitely great for pushing that final damage, especially good with Creepy Puppeteer. All right, Sure Strike versus Vampire Slayer the second. Kind of into Slayer here. I just like having like a really solid density of two drops. I don't think we're gonna be that low on tricks here in the end. I can see it going either way. Also, we are seeing quite a few green cards. Okay, Siphon Essence, Nurturing Presence, this is all... Yeah, Strike is not very good. Neither is Vampire Slayer, but might as well keep our two drops up. Just snag the best card in the pack, you never know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll pass us a 14th pick Lantern Bearer and we'll have Direction. Whoops. Alright, something got auto-selected weirdly, but whatever. Oh, look at that, it's Hullbreaker Horror. Interesting. Okay, I did dream about opening this card. But there's a Traveling Minister and an Abrade, so... Hmm. Holebreaker is real good. But our Holebreaker Horror deck is not necessarily going to be the same as our good Creepy Puppeteer deck. Shoot. Well, what are we doing here, chat? What are we doing here? Pretty sure I'm just on Minister. Or am I on a Braid? It's really close. Minister's really busted. I guess we don't have any removal yet. I think we just a Braid. Gosh. Yeah, really close. I could see any of those three picks being the place to go. Um, I'm just going to take Falcon Wrath Celebrants now. That's easy. Yeah, Kraken's really good. There's something about seven drops that scares me a little bit. I feel like I don't mind my curve kind of topping out at six when we're one of the blood colors. Whoops. Misclick. Ballista Watcher. All right. Looks like a Ballista Watcher here. So not really seeing any good white cards. So we had some leeway to pivot to the Kraken, but that's okay. And there's really nothing for anyone here except for a Hungry Ritual for us, which is fine. Still think I like this 2-drop a bit more than I like Sure Strike. Buttery, that's a good word, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, Langs, Ulamog, Donald, I forget Ulamog costs more than Emrakul, like, every time, right? <laughs> Alchemist Gambit. Darn, this would have been a spicy one to go with the Holebreaker, the Holebreaker horror pick. But uh I think if you can't play pay blue for it, it's not a it's not a thing. But we do get to take Kessic Flame Breather. And maybe we'll pick up enough reckless impulses and wedding invitations and such that this ends up being great for us. It's certainly better than Vampire Slayer either way. But yeah, we had several spicy directions. Belligerent guest, nice. Sanctify again, but of course we would rather take this playable than the board card. Oh, we are still kind of mono reddish. Like, definitely still some room for us to pivot if we pick up something great in pack three, the way things are going now. Um, oh, this is poop. There's Adamant Will, which seems a bit better than Sure Strike. It is better than Sure Strike. 
There's also just Daybreak Combatants, which works well with us having a bunch of two drops and is good with Creepy Puppeteer again. Just comes in, does something, and then turns into a 4-3 and forces your opponent to do something about it. Think about Combatants over Adamant Will. I think Adamant Will is a little better, but I think if we have the chance to stay open into pack 3, that seems like an interesting thing to be doing. Okay, Griff Rider. Speaking of cards, they're good with Creepy Puppeteer. As long as you stack the abilities correctly, this one seems like it should be pretty good. Also good with Belligerent Guest, Daybreak Combatants, Blista Watcher. Okay, I think over my third Vampire Slayer, when we're on 19 playables, I would rather just take End the Festivities. This is like a very good sideboard card, and I don't think we're going to be hard up for two drops at this rate. Another Hookhand Mariner, doesn't really matter too much. Heron Blessed Geist, we have no enchantments at the moment, I don't think. Just a little awkward, I could take Lantern or Geist. Uh, in best of three, I'm sort of tempted toward Lantern, but I guess it's Geist. I don't know, doesn't really matter. You're unlikely to see any of those cards hit the deck. Adamant Will. Alright, like picking up one of these. Yeah, I mean, we have exactly a second half of Twin Blade Geist. It's not that hard to play around the, uh... To play around removing that for ourselves. Oh, you mean the enchantment for, uh, Geist. Yes, that's true. If we pick up a bunch of Draw Skull Infantry, maybe it becomes a consideration. Man, like, what's wrong with Adamant Will? Ain't nothing wrong with Adam and Will. All right, and we got our Sanctify. Lovely. Henrika Domnathy. Henrika Domnathy and just... Mm hmm. Fierce Retribution? Hmm. So we got 15 playables, 14 playables in just red-black right now. We got Aim for the Head. Yeah, man, I want to pivot so bad. This card is so fucking busted. <laughs> it's so busted. But it's not like black's been open, so we're not going to get any black cards. We're going to have to kind of staple together a deck. We have no removal. Gosh, I feel like I'm not being bold enough about pivoting here. But I think it's just the uh, the Fierce Retribution. Ah, congratulations to the black players in the queue, in the, uh, in the queue here. I think this is Reckless Impulse over second Fierce Retribution here. Fierce Retribution not that exciting for our very aggressive deck. And we have 7 billion 2-drops. So many Sure Strikes and... Yeah, I don't think so, Volcron. That card does not seem like it wheels too often to me. You can check 17 lands to be sure. Reckless, Impulse, Average, last seen at pack is pick 6. Alright, so there's Knife, Sure Strike. I guess I'm on Sure Strike here. This pack is really bad. Could have had a Blood Crease Socialite if we'd taken uh, Henrika. That's fine though, we have zillions of two drops. Sure Strike seems like it'll be fine. That's a Drog Skull Infantry. I'm gonna slam that one. Ooh, Distracting Geist. This card seems pretty reasonable. It's not like especially good. It definitely played out worse than it looked, but. Actually, wow, its rates are terrible. It's still a bit better than Militia Rallyer, though, and seems better than Daybreak Combatants. Okay, Griff Rider versus Belligerent Guest. Seems like it could be nice to have more, uh, more evasion, but it's also nice to have more blood. This card plays slightly better defense, for whatever that's worth. I think I like the guest. I think the blood's gonna pay off well. 
Okay, another Twin Blade Geist versus another Drog Skull Infantry. I think we're on Geist here. I think. Well, it's actually close, honestly. Is plus two plus two going to be better than Double Strike on most of our stuff? We have no Traveling Ministers. I think it's still Geist, but. Genuinely semi close pick there. Alright, we got Wedding Invitation versus Supernatural Rescue. We now have the Double Geist plus Drog Skull Infantry plus Distracting Geist, which means we now have an actual some number of spirits here, so I think it's Rescue. I do like Invitation quite a bit, though. Actually, honestly, Invitation and Rescue are pretty similar. Rescue can technically aim in for more damage, but Invitation's just more consistent. I don't know if we're going to play, you know, whatever, any of those cards if we take them anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough, Fulcron. I don't know. I like Reckless Impulse a lot. And Fierce Retribution in our... Aggro deck seems just okay. Maybe, maybe we'll die to bombs and feel sad. There's no world where it's unholy efficient, I don't think so. Okay, Militia Rallyer sure strikes a little tempting when we've got the second Distracting Geist. And Rallyer's kind of bad. Wow, last pick Spike Ripsaw. Spike Ripsaw would be great in our deck if we could cast it. That's the goal, Mistastic. Alright, so time to seal deck this baby. Seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I wish we had... We could have, we could have pivoted into Kraken and it would have been fine, I think. But uh, we ended up somewhere pretty decent anyway. No imprisonment's definitely sad. White was, like, not actually super open in the end. Like, red was clearly open, but nothing else was being especially passed around after that first pack, it feels like. Anyway, a braid, double impulse... Double Guest, Ballista Watcher, Puppeteer Celebrants, Attendance. Infantry, Retribution, Flare, Geist, 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 Griff Rider, Fearful Villager. I think I like Knife quite a bit when we get to Double Twin Blade Geist. This gives me three two drops. We're gonna want more than that. I don't hate a lacerate either. Do wanna also shore up my true drop slot a little bit. Is the best way to shore up the two drop slot gonna be vampire slayers or hungry ridge wolves? We've got fearful villager and ballista watcher on the wolf side of things. Vampire slayer can slay vampires. How often are we being blocked by vampires that have more than two toughness? It's kind of just literally guessed. <laughs> Probably Ridge Wolf is better. We don't have any human synergies or anything like that. Yeah, I think we're likely to play some Wedding Invitation, but I do want to make sure we actually have the creature count, because you'd, you'd much rather be playing a 2-2 on turn 2 than a Wedding Invitation. But yeah, let's go with some Ridge Wolves. Let's go with Daybreak Combatants, I think I like quite a bit. Wedding Invitation, and do I play a second Wedding Invitation, a Lacerate Flesh, an Adamant Will? Oh, I haven't even made room for Sure Strikes yet, actually. Good question, Mistastic. I, I think with Double Belligerent Guest, Falconrath Celebrants, Olivia's Attendance, and some enchantment -y guys, and Lantern Flare, we have plenty of reason, and Ceremony Knife, we have plenty of reason to be 17 lands. I think five two-drop creatures is about as low as I want to go. Let's reset the curve a bit here. Hmm. Maybe we don't need the combatants or the... You got it, man leggings. Let's figure out the deck first. All right. I think one of these three drops could go. Current creature count is 15. It's adequate. <sighs> Wedding Invitation versus Sure Strike. Which of these is actually better? Uh, 
You got double belligerent guests, some menace, some tappers, some flyers, some double strikers. I feel like I want at least two combat tricks with the way this deck is looking. Um, that's a good question. Is Flame Breather better than Hungry Ridge Wolf? It could be. Certainly could be. Um, I don't think Will to Protect Attendance is a real is a real thing. I think Will being better than Sure Strike is a real thing. I think I would play the first Will before the first Strike every time because it protects cheap creatures from removal, which is also nice. But uh, casting Attendance and then untapping with it is going to win us the game often enough that I'm not too worried about Adam and Will for that circumstance. We're also hopefully almost never going to have eight lands in play. It's just First Strike Man Leggings. So it's specifically a lot better with... It's a little better with Belligerent Guest. It's a little bit more damage if you're hitting with something unblocked, but Adamant Will is just generally more powerful. So we got Invite, we got Sure Strike, Flame Breather. Flame Breather with double Reckless Impulse, double Wedding Invitation is kind of a thing. Oh, we're already 40 cards. Hmm. Yeah, so last couple of decisions are like Wedding Invitation versus Sure Strike. And possibly cutting Daybreak Combatants for Flame Breather. I think that the Combatants plus Geist Curve is strong enough that I want to keep Combatants in. It's just like pretty easy for us to throw creatures in that are really hard to block with that card. Flame Breather is like a pretty consistent like 1-3 for 2 that generates 2 damage, but I think Daybreak Combatants probably generate some more damage on average. Yeah, I, I don't mind Sure Strike. It's definitely something I'm interested in for this deck. The only question is what to cut for it, as always. And it's hard, it's hard to throw it in over any of these other cards. I guess the other thing about Sure Strike is that it's a little bit awkward with Reckless Impulse compared to Wedding Imitation. Yeah, Volcrow makes an interesting case for second Wedding Imitation over Reckless Impulse. It's really hard for me not to play all my Reckless Impulses in, in any red deck. Reckless Impulse is just so sick. I'm going to check on Reckless Impulse's numbers in red-white for a second here. Yeah, not a slave to the numbers, just curious. I know that I'm a little bit biased because I just love drawing cards. Even if I'm playing an aggro deck where it may not be important. Alright, Reckless Impulse is solidly mediocre compared to Wedding Invitation. Wedding Invitation is slightly worse. But it's not that far off. Yeah, could be could be a sixteen lander. We have some blood, and yeah, man, leggings. That's that's too rich for my blood. Okay, we can throw in the second invitation over land. Doesn't seem completely out of scope. We need to hit. We need to hit three lands every time. If we miss on a fourth land and have to play a wedding invitation, it's not the end of the world. Perhaps, I mean, Kyle Rose is a good drafter. It makes sense to pay some attention to what Kyle Rose thinks. Man, Leggings, you qualified? Already? Or do you mean you've done two drafts in this format? Okay. Heh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I don't think Fearful Villagers are cut as a two, as a three drop. That's an interesting question, though. I was looking at it as being nice because it boosts the Ridge Wolves in addition to being kind of hard to block. It might be our weakest three drop, actually, though. Yeah, I don't I don't really want to go to below seventeen lands. I've liked seventeen lands a lot in this format. And like we are trying, we have a six drop. We are trying to hit pretty pretty consistently if we can. Tricky, tricky, tricky. 
yeah, we can we can start like this. Like that's the thing is like these last couple decisions don't matter too too much. It's like we know uh you know, we'll we'll know more soon enough. We have the option to sideboard, we're not stuck with this forever. Alright, let's change the lands. Nine eight. What's a good aggressive mountain? Let's go Theros today. Yep, Asteos, I think there's some wisdom in that. I think it, it will matter, but it doesn't matter very much. There's better ways to spend the time. All right, quick check on emotes. The emotes went away again. Gosh, thank you, chat. Why would the emotes go away again? We set them all. We had them yesterday. I haven't reinstalled Arena or anything. Like, what even happened? <sighs> and we'll put in all the hedrons because people wanted them. Turned around is not really a red white emote, but whatever. Oh, sleeve check. Yeah, I can't even throw this on. No, Raze, I've never never played this game on mobile. Alright, sleeve check. If I run out of time for my last game, though, I'm going to blame all of you, chat, for making me making me do the flash. This deck looks good, though. I'm, I'm happy with this. Just got to turn up the heat. Oh, it's Deus. No, that sounds miserable. I'm sorry. I feel like Arena's probably like a good mobile game if you treat it like a mobile game. But like, I don't know. I would, I would probably play even Bejeweled or something on a PC instead of a phone if I were playing in a, you know, massive Bejeweled qualifier tournament. Hmm. It's a little awkward. We do have the Fierce Retribution to play defense. I also just hate mulliganing. We have a wreck of simples to find planes. I'm down. I like wreck of simples over wedding invitation here already. Mindly school. All right, sure. Not gonna play Reckless Impulse here. We'd have to hit like exactly land spell for that to to work. I don't think we need to be doing that yet. Although if we do hit exactly land spell, it's great. We can cast almost all the spells we would hit off of it. Close call, honestly. Oh, arena's about to crash. So I don't think we're going to get a choice. All right, opponent's turn. Arena made the decision for us. Well, of all the turns for it to happen there, could have a... Uh... And no, we don't have to discard a hand size here. There have been quite a few crashes lately. Okay. Opponent Mr. Land Drop, that's cool. I'm into it. Alright, looks like we're probably gonna be okay. Hopefully. And they're just chilling. Hard chillin. All right, so what are we doing here? They got two mana up. There's there's no instant speed removal they have that could get me. They could have something like a witch's web. I feel like this is gonna be smash. Hmm. Okay, we could just abrade the mind leech ghoul and attack here. 
I might want to obey the Bloodseeker later, if we get that far. I think I like attack plus Adamant Will here over a braid. I just think it's pretty safe. It's like no green combat trick's gonna save them from Adamant Will. And I'm pretty sure there's no removal that gets us. I can't think of anything. At instant speed for only two mana. Grasp is two, but only a human. Wolf Strike is, is three. It's all good. Um, should we play Impulse first if we're gonna will? Technically, I guess. I mean, we have to we have to hit a land if we want to play one from hand. If we do the impulse thing, undying malice. That's fine. Okay. Maybe it was maybe impulse was like completely technically correct there. I'm not sure. I guess we get more information, and there's not really a place where it hurts us. I could also just hold up a braid for the mind leech. I could just braid the mind leech school here. It's a three three. That doesn't seem terrible. Yeah, maybe we just abraid their 3-3. Three, three. Honestly. Save impulse for a future turn. Mastastic, when you say holding it. <laughs> holding it in case of wolf strike. I mean if we kill the Mind Leech School, they have nothing that can wolf strike my belligerent guest anyway, right? And they're they'd have to play it out at sorcery speed. I'm like a little bit more worried about a pump spell. I think, on the whole. I don't know, reasonably close. Nothing wrong with thinking greedy. Alright, so we've generated our blood, we've hit them for some damage, they seem to still be missing land drops, which is a uh, rough for them. Um, reckless Impulse is, we've already used our combat trick, we don't have any sure strikes, there's nothing Reckless Impulse is going to hit that's combat relevant. Yeah, opponent, opponent missing land drops is, is obviously very big. It's a good strat for us. Okay, so we'll just go with Distracting Geist here. Yeah, a Braid just coming back at common and having this sick art is just tremendous. Alright, so opponent was black, green, no lands. Does this influence how we sideboard at all? They might have some slightly bigger creatures, which like... I still think Adamant Will is good enough to be the thing I would lean on. Yeah, Histeus, it's a rough, it's a rough one. Definitely not bringing in last rate flesh. This is the biggest thing, you know. This is the card we bring. If we see some kind of tiny bomb like welcoming vampire that we are gonna need to kill, but uh, pretty sure we're just gonna run it back. Felt smooth at least. Are vampire slayers good here or no? That's a good question, actually, Perunjan. Are they did they did have? Yeah, actually. Actually, probably should have been on the uh, Vampire Slayers there, given they literally showed us a 1-3 Vampire that can block Hungry Ridge Wolf. Okay, I'll have to make that change if it comes back to it. That's something to remember. Like, Vampire Slayers is actually... It has the kind of text that you would see on a sideboard card, even though it's just a 2-drop. But yes, also not worth thinking that much about what to board him when our opponent didn't play any cards. <laughs> Alright, man, Leggings, you're you're forgiven for, for your land-based sins. That is That is pretty good. I enjoyed that. All right, opposite problem as before, but also as before, we got we got stuff we can play. Look at that! Look at that! Never didn't have it. Mountain. Okay. Well, this is another dimension on which I guess it makes sense that our opponent didn't play any cards. Uh, so Drog Skull Infantry can block Flame Breather. So even though we like Twin Blade Geist is only great if we draw exactly combatants, so we'll go infantry here. Ouch, Kamal. Alright, already punished for not having this be a vampire slayer. It's fine. Okay, so we'll just go guest here, no real reason to attack and try to kill one of those things with a trick. Just continue to spend our mana efficiently, and our opponent's missing land drops again. There they go. All right, let's play a real game of magic here. Ceremonial knife. Ceremonial knife. Ceremonial feelings. Do, 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 do. All right, a braid can kill the knife, which is kind of fun. 
I would actually be incredibly into attacking with Guest, and they have no good blocks, and if they try to block with Flame Breather, I'll just kill their knife. Splendid. No blood for you. Yeah, Isaias, it's possible there's there's a Helana Elena in there. Oh, okay, that's another card. Fortunately, Sorin is not that big a problem for us. We can we can beat down Sorin. That's okay. So I could reckless impulse here in case I hit wedding invitation. No real reason not to. We can also hit nothing. Nothing's also an option. If I swing with belligerent guests and they double block, it's super awkward. Alright, so we just go in with guest plus infantry at Sorin. We have to swing everything at Sorin. So the thing is, if I swing everything at Sorin, they just get to eat the Twin Blade Geist. They can line up. I guess they don't get to eat the Twin Blade Geist. They get to eat something, though. They can line up this on this, this on this, and I'm just losing a creature. If I swing with these two, they can block this with this, this with this. I get to kill Sorin and kill the Bloodseeker at the same time, which I guess I get to do anyway, right? I'm still just choosing what to kill. It's possible they, like, block poorly around Adamant Will, though. And I guess Geist getting killed doesn't matter that much if it just becomes a double strike enchantment. Like, this works if they block this to this and this to this. If they block this to this and this to this... Then I lose Drogskull Infantry. I think I'd rather lose Drogskull Infantry than Twin Blade Geist here. And there's no way they can save Sorin at this point, so we'll just do this. Save the Twin Blade Geist. Oh great, they make the blocks where I don't lose a creature. I'm excited about that. They might switch things around knowing... They did see Adam at Will last game, so I'm not surprised to see them switch things around. Oh, they didn't switch things around. Okay. Great. Alright, so we lose a little bit of Reckless Impulse value, but that's fine. It's still cycled, kind of. And we killed Sorin, which is the big deal. Really glad our opponent missed a lander up there. This would have been harder if they hadn't. Although I guess we didn't actually swing with our... with our turn 4 creature, so maybe it wouldn't have been that hard. Combat tricks. Combat tricks are very nice. Alright, Naked Courier Bat, because they lost their lifelink creature. That's tough. Huh. So I could play Double Hungry Ridgewolf, but I think it's just Ballista Watcher. Guest can get double blocked. I guess I attack with Guest Infantry here. Forces them to decide between stopping a blood token or taking two damage. This works. All right, just play the four out. Poor Ridge Wolf. Ah, uh, didn't matter anyway. Creepy Puppeteer. I like that one. It's exactly two creatures. It's exactly two creatures. The combat. The combo. Yeah, this is a pretty good rare. It's a pretty good rare. Whoever passed this to us, I feel like it's kind of unlikely that they should have. Maybe they took a bleed dry. It's nighttime. Goodbye. Yeah. Alright, so... We don't have any great attacks here. I don't really feel like making this into an... We can deal two damage and make this into enchantment. I know, I know. But Puppeteer was so good exactly there, chat. It was so good exactly there. Let's, uh... Hmm. I guess I'm on no attacks, just jam. Nighttime Villager. Got him. 
All right, fine. Histeus, fine, fine, fine. It does. Which win rate were y'all looking at? Puppeteer. No, Puppeteer kind of solidly beating out Flame Blessed Bolt, looks like. Maybe I'm looking too low for Flame Blessed Bolt. Is Flame Blessed Bolt much higher than I... Nah. I'm looking at game and hand win rate. Maybe that's not the best one to look at, but it's kind of my default. And it's slightly above Rending Flame and Flame Blessed Bolt and a Braid. And Olivia's attendance, for that matter. Is game and hand win rate 58? Oh, I'm looking at White Red specifically. Okay. In White Red specifically, it has the best game and hand win rate of all those cards. But I suppose we picked it second when we didn't know we were White Red, and nobody who picks it knows they're White Red on pack one, pick one, so. Chat, you win this round. Anyway, deck seemed fine. I was pretty happy with Reckless Impulse. Even just getting a choice of one of two cards, if you can't guess both, is still pretty fine. Yeah, that was that was a solid first round. It's gonna get harder from here. At least we're gonna be playing fast rounds. I'm not super worried about running out of time with this deck. Nope. Okay. Thank you, belligerent guest, for doing what you do. Not sure what you mean, primogenitor. Ballista Watcher is uh well below Puppeteer. Ballista Watcher is slightly below Voldaren Epicure. And Nurturing Presence. But if you mean it's a 4 mana 4 3 that is better than Ballista Watcher, yes, all those things are true. Alright, Lantern Flare will eventually do something for us. Eventually. Oh, they're gonna kill my Belligerent Guest Chat. I'm gonna be so sad when they do. Oh, wow. No Flameless Bolt, no Abrade. Okay, this is looking good. Look at us generating blood like there's no tomorrow. Opponents have had some weak starts here. Mestasky, are you talking to me or man leggings now? We took a braid over Minister. Uh, pick two, pack, pack two, pick one. Opponent was white red, didn't do anything. Or blue red, didn't do anything. Gets blue red, didn't do anything. Last rate, flesh. No, I'm just gonna stick to this. Yeah, it was close, Mestastic. I debated it. I think I think in this deck, Minister probably would have ended up being a bit better. If we end up with Twin Blade Geists and stuff. We need to yeah, it's kind of sad to think we're playing against... I, I think it's still the case, chat, can correct me if I'm wrong, we're still playing against people who are on their day two runs, right? Our opponent's just having heinous luck so far. I mean, I guess our one opponent drafted a Sorin, and then we just killed their Sorin, which is kind of our, our win. Okay, Forest Ceremonial Knife was... If you had to give me a list of turns, I would have expect. Sorry, would have expected that would not have been among them. Girthy Gerbil, thanks for the follow. Okay, Oakshade Stalker is Dece, I guess. Wish I had an upgrade for that. I do not. Time to play some defense. Howlpack Piper is pretty good, but, uh, well, it depends what they have to drop in off of it, and Adamant Will plus Creepy Vote here is a lot of size. They only have two cards left in hand. Let's see how this goes. I guess they just block Puppeteer. They did not block Puppeteer. Okay. All right, what's coming off Piper? Are we going to need to bring in, or what do you call it, to deal with this? That's pretty good. Okay, this is activated only as a sorcery, which makes it a little bit fair. Opponent wants to race. That is an interesting idea. Oh, they got, they got a fight spell? No, they're going to flip that. All right. Ballista Wielder, pretty scary. We've got the Adamant Will. They've got this thing, okay. 
So we're going to basically need them not to have a trick. If they have a trick and can break up Reckless Impulse, or can break up Adamant Will, we're kind of screwed. So we're just going to hope they don't. They were paused there on something. Let's hope that something wasn't Wolf Strike. Oh, wow. That's a... Uh... Hmm. Okay. I'm into it. This only becomes a 4-3. It's not quite big enough. All right, well, we'll get in. We get to play another creature after this. We're actually... They're at 6 now. We're not that far behind. This is doable. Nothing can get pinged down here. They have a 1-2, which is not that scary. Hopefully they didn't just draw another big creature. If they just drew another big creature, things will get harder. <laughs> okay, how big is that? It's a 4-4. Four, four. All right, all right, you got my uh, you got my attention. Jesus Christ, this card is stupid. This card is so stupid. <laughs> Alright, at least whatever they hit wasn't too scary. Where are these opponents on your day one? I mean, I am not happy playing against this opponent. I would rather play against somebody whose deck was bad. This person's deck seems very good. Alright, so this is going to be a Reckless Impulse plus Ceremonial Knife here, I guess. We're just going to have to... Like, they can literally just draw an extra creature every turn for the rest of the game, so it's going to be really hard. I guess we can find Olivia's Attendance and try to burn them out, maybe? Or we could find an Abrade. Oh, Wedding Invitation. Is Wedding Invitation lethal? Damn, it's really close to lethal. Flare does not hit any target, Mistastic. I mean, it is good, but it doesn't hit any target. Is this lethal? No, no it's not. If we ditch the infantry to blood, it'll be lethal next turn. That's a good point. Am I just going to do that? We flip everything over, then we ditch the infantry to blood and kill them with invitation? I think that's our best bet. That does seem like the best way to do this, right? We can attack with Werewolf and force a trade. But I think we want to keep the board a little bit more complex than that anyway. Alright, we'll just go invite. Maybe we'll draw somebody to kill the Piper. Did not draw somebody to kill the Piper. Alright, we'll play Knife. Opponent does not know about the infantry. So I think we're just going to... Keep it chill here. And they have to rip exactly removal. Okay. We are at least very good at flipping it back today. Deck tracker is down, Jofu. That it's it's just gonna stay down, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. Jeez. Alright, opponent is uh very intensely piping here, but it's not going to matter. We do have them dead. This card is ridiculous. Such a ridiculous magic card. Well, flipping it back today means they're not hitting us with a 5-5 Ballista Watcher, which is nice. Yay, blood plus infantry. Sick stuff. All right. They knew they were dead. Sick. All right. Okay. Beat our first... Uh, I guess we beat our second bomb of the day, right? We beat the Sora and then we beat the Piper. Adam and Will kind of just does all the things. Yeah, well... Note, Silver EMS, that we hit Wedding Invitation off of Reckless Impulse. So I think it's... I think it's a clear exercise in, syner in synergy here. They're working together. It's so nice. Like, we were fighting chat... And it's like the little kid that just comes tugging on the parents, like the little twins, like Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen in Full House probably did at some point. Sure. Okay, we need our third land, we have many ways to hit it. Geist and Griff Rider don't exactly go together, but this is fine. By the way, glad we're playing 17 lands. Wow, Creepy Puppeteer is going to be insane if one of our next two cards is a mountain. See if we get there. 
I guess Griff Rider is better if we hit the mountain and it's kind of neutral otherwise. This dies for no value to more removal spells, I guess, but if they have a Flame Blessed Bolt, I'd rather save the Geist. Let's see if they have the Abrade or the Bolt. They have Abrade, I think, because they were looking at Wedding Invitation. Nope. Okay. So much for all my theories. And Fierce Retribution at least defends us if we stumble on lands for a bit longer. Wanderlight Spirit, that one's fine. Mountain? Hey! Creepy Puppeteer! This card is really good. Take four. This is a human? This is a human. Okay. And we got a great looking Reckless Impulse next turn if we don't hit the mountain. Daybreak Combatant. Sorry, opponent is going to re racing. Racing has been called. Good luck, opponent. We got Wedding Invitation. Hungry uh, Ritual. Alright, so we go Reckless Impulse. Ideally, just hit a land. We did not hit a land. We hit Adamant Will, which is... Are we casting that or are we casting Fierce Retribution? I think we're just going to cast Fierce Retribution. I guess it's kind of a tell if we don't cast the Will, but whatever. If our opponent decides not to attack, I feel like that's a win for us anyway. So, kind of awkward, but Reckless Impulse is fine. Our adamant will... Okay, that's fine. Blood Petal Celebrant, sure, whatever. Another Hungry Ridge Wolf. Alright, this time we're going to have to hit the land. Okay, we did hit the land and we hit a Twin Blade Geist. Something that actually blocks is delightful. Because I am looking to be in block mode here, I think. Oh, that's true, Patrick. They did. Okay, of the things to block... Do I block the one that doesn't give them a blood token, or do I block the one that's slightly harder to block? I think I block the one that is slightly harder to block. Okay, Binding Geist is fine. We're going to have multiple solid blockers out here. Belligerent Guest gaining 3 life with Wedding Invitation could be pretty important here. This is like a 2 for 1 against us, which is nice. But if we block this and then they put it on the Ridge Wolf, the Ridge Wolf grows a little bit with the other Ridge Wolf, which is nice too. We got a Sure Strike. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, Belligerent Ge Guest plus Twin Blade Geist plus Wedding Invitation could be really good if we get that far. Let's see if we get that far. Another planes. All right, I think we just go for this play and hope they don't have the removal spell. If they do have the removal spell, it's pretty sad, but I think we just want to be mana efficient here. It worked. All right, and going in with Ridgewolf. Yeah, Ridgewolf is not going to be able to block. And Geist is looking like a very fierce blocker here. All right, let's hope they don't have any more interaction. If they have interaction, we're in trouble. Although we still have Replay Guest. If they bounce it, we can Wedding Invitation it still, which is nice. Still doing this. Okay. So this is a 1-2 Double Striker that can block Binding Geist. I guess they might be trying to Sure Strike again, but Sure Strike is only a trade? Let's see. If they have Sure Strike and I don't block, I'm dead. So... If we assume they have Sure Strike, I should block... They could have something like a bounce spell. 
or a minus two minus O effect. I don't think there's much. All right, I think we think we go for this block and see what happens. Serpentine ambush. All right, people people keep doing this one to us, and it keeps being really funny every time it happens. I suppose we'll gain two life. We're not gonna have a better uh, chance than this, I think. There it is. This card again. My oh my. There's our mountain. Hello. Hello. Salute. Alright, so this is face up. Creepy puppeteer scary. Oh wow, that actually forces a... No, it doesn't force a chump... Oh, it does force a chump block. Ouch. No, our opponent had the good rare. Oh, no. That's so strong. That's so strong. Oh, miserable. Oh, God. All right, well, we, we took our loss here. That's... Can't play around that one. We get to task two creatures, and technically... Do we survive? They, they have to attack with two creatures to activate Puppeteer. I guess I don't know if we're alive, but I'm gonna hope we are. And then hope we can just draw attendance or something. We already used both our Reckless Impulses. Our opponent's got three cards in hand. They've drawn exactly five lands the whole game. What did they discard to Blood? They discarded Steelclad Spirit to Blood, and they've still drawn five lands all game. Gosh. Yeah, so we were dead to Ambush if we didn't block, because they would have just played it on the Combatants. So we were kind of a uh, rockin' hard place there. The good news is our blocks line up okay here, in theory. Yeah, it's good to know what their tricks are. I don't know if it affects how we sideboard at all, but it's good to know. Okay, successfully traded. We're not dead to just the Geist. <laughs> our opponent's just our deck chat. What are we supposed to do? Our opponent's just us. They're just us. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Um, Lacerate Flesh, I guess, hits Creepy Puppeteer, but seems a little bit beside the point. If only. If only it worked out that way. Estaeus. All right, so Vampire Slayer does not seem warranted. <sighs> yeah, I don't think there's much to be sideboarding here. End the festivities kills Binding Geist, but I guess it kills Binding Geist and Blood Petal Celebrant, but that still doesn't seem like quite enough to be excited about. Mm. Yeah, I guess Sure Strike is better against Serpentine Ambush. <laughs> yeah, I think we, uh... I think we just run it back. I still don't know what I put Sure Strike in over. Still seems like all of our cards are a bit better than it. Mm. We do have a lot of 3-drops that die to Flame Blessed Bolt, but there's nothing we can do about that, I don't think. All right, let's just let's just try running it back. Like all of our spells were fine there. We just had better spells in a better order, or I guess the same spells in a better order. Yeah, I don't know, Kamal. I think the the main the average case scenario for Pop Zero is we just trade with it. I don't think we want to be spending five mana to kill the thing that does for four damage. We could have cut knife maybe. I do think that this is the kind of matchup that could easily come down to one player running out of stuff to do. Like, I, I think having a consistent source of blood seems very good. Alright, well, there's the attendance. We just need to survive long enough to cast it. And they didn't flame bless Bolt our Twin Blade Geist immediately, which is great. Alright, please hit some lands for us, Reckless Impulse. Appreciate you, Reckless Impulse. If I draw a fourth land, I'm probably just going to go Puppeteer over Geist. Uh, new player detected. Unfortunately, I got kind of addicted to the Decathlon yesterday and got both my tokens, so I'm not going to be playing any more Decathlon today. But if you're wondering, did Aaron get tokens? The answer is yes, Aaron is replete with tokens. Yeah, these are literally all the most expensive cards in our deck. So we're going to be playing stuff every turn. The question is just, is our stuff going to keep up with our opponent's stuff? Eases. 
Dream Shackle Geist, huh? Our opponent's deck is uh is just better than ours, I think, unfortunately. I think they are doing a slightly better job of playing good cards than we are. I shouldn't have played that pre-combat, but it doesn't matter. Um, Hisseus, I, I built my own blue-black control alchemy deck and played against like six werewolf decks and beat all the werewolf decks with Shadow's Verdict, so I would recommend building something that's good against werewolves. Fuck me. Our opponent our opponent had the cyborg tech chat. At least Dream Shackle Geist doesn't do anything. Um, Aardvark. Distracting Geist was exiled. So we had to play it. We also didn't know about it in the festivities. If we know about it in the festivities, we make some different choices there, obviously. Alright, found our fourth land. I guess I'm on Puppeteer and just try to race. Racing against Dream Shackle Geist seems impossible, but also winning with anything else seems impossible. Yeah, I don't think we're going to win this one. I think uh, we missed a land drop and our opponent's draw was just a little bit too, uh, too sharp. Uh, Dad 1, 2, we could go for Ballista Watcher. I don't think it helps, though. They just... I mean, it lets us kill Dream Shackle Geist if we literally skip our whole turn. Or if we... I don't know, it doesn't seem worth it. Alright, looks like we're dying to Serpentine Ambush here. Yeah, opponent just raced us. Raced us to death here. Their deck was a good good plan against ours. Is that literal dead? Yeah, with Flame Blast Bolt, that is literal dead. Even without Flame Blast Bolt, that's literal dead. Okay. Alright, so opponent's deck was ours, but with an extra bomb rare. Nice deck list. Yeah, my deck I, I had a couple of really horrible decathlon pools and scrubbed out very badly. But uh successfully hit the absolutely broken blue-black deck, which seems like the best deck in the format at the end. A blue Flame Breather trigger. Yeah, you don't see that one every day. Also, I guess Serpentine Ambush might just be playable if you're blue-red. It's a trick. It can add, like, four damage to a Flame Breather, which is nice. Alright, this is our best hand in a while. I am into it. And it looks like we start with Ritual for Geist. So Geist is better if we draw exactly one of our cards. Ritual is better if we draw exactly the other one of our cards. Ritual, I guess it's Geist. I suppose if we were playing around Syncopate, Ritual might have been the pick there. So it does a little bit better at doing that. Okay, now I'll play Ridge Wolf because we're likely to play Ballista Watcher next turn. Not surprised to see that. Innocent Traveler. That's a solid card. Alright, they get to hit us with a 5-3. Nothing we can do about it. We could sack the Geist to keep it small for another turn. Is that crazy? They get a 5-3. I just don't think I want to sack here. Yeah, deck list it, it's a uh, <laughs> it's quite something. It's quite something. Hopefully you get all the promo editions at least, but I don't know if that's true. God, do I sack this just to give them not a 5-3 for a turn? It's kind of like bouncing it. It's kind of like a bounce ball in their 5-3 because they have a useless 1-3 instead of a good 5-3 flyer. And this can't really attack anyway. It's very unlikely it's going to attack through whatever they cast here. Oh man, it's tough. We don't have any like tricks or anything. Yeah, there's a chance we, like, can equip Watcher and just go in. I mean, it depends what they play. They might have removal. They're blue-black. I think I decline. I think I say go ahead. Hit me if you want to hit me. I don't think we win this game by trying to be all attrition-y. If they play, like, a Diver Scob or something, I'd be really sad. Cruel Witness is fine, though. That one is a little bit easier to get through. Distracting Geist? Okay. So I think I'm down to trade Ballista Watcher because that leaves them more open to Distracting Geist. 
could also Reckless Impulse and see if we hit a combat trick or a way to kill Malicious Invader. Oh uh, yeah, Necrosis, I'm sorry to hear that. It is, it is really cheap to enter, at least. It is really cheap to enter. All right, let's attack with Watcher and see what they do here. If this dies, their thing also shrinks, which is nice. Okay, we successfully shrank the invader, great. All right, let's just play two more creatures out. I think I like the thing that makes it hard to block over the Celebrants. It just adds a lot of damage. I guess this makes our Reckless Impulse turn less flexible, which is a which is a cost. Screaming Swarm, alright. Are we holding them back successfully? We've held them back successfully, and we drew Creepy Puppeteer, which I love. Okay. So Creepy Puppeteer plus Geist. Wow, Creepy Puppeteer gives us so many interesting options. We could Reckless Impulse try to hit the land. I feel like that's got to be wrong. So we can Puppeteer, put it on Geist, attack with both, tap the Malicious Invader, and force a block with Screaming Swarm. We can put it on Geist and force through 8 damage if they don't want to chump block something. Which of those is going to be better? Which of those is going to be better? I think I like forcing the Screaming Swarm to die because I have a, more stuff that can kill the invader than can kill the swarm. Yeah, I think I like clear, continue to clear their blockers and stuff too. We could also just play Celebrants. I don't think I want to do that. Actually, would I rather get rid of the, uh... Hmm. Would I rather get rid of the Swarm? I think I'd still rather get rid of the Swarm here. They're going to block Creepy Puppeteer either way, so this is going to go back to being a 3-3. Okay, so good damage. Took their big thing off the board. Solid turn. Creepy Puppeteer continues to be excellent. Grizzly or Ritual is fine. Opponent is either blocking or they're trading 3 damage for 4 damage. Lantern Bearer is also fine. If opponent's chilling, we've got Celebrants and Reckless Impulse. I guess they already have 2 blood. Okay, that's fine. Alright, so now we just jam Celebrants and... Do I jam the land as well? I think I jam the land, it makes the Reckless Impulse better. No, no, we can wreck Simples into land drop, so I think we just jam Celebrant's pass after attacking. Distracting Geist plus Infinite Menace is pretty good, as far as things that are good go. We have a lot of cards in our deck that can add some, add some surprise damage, especially with the Geist having Double Strike. Ooh, we got MTG Economy Talk. That's good stuff. Math is great, everybody. Listen to the math. <laughs> it's like a very ominous sequel, Jofu. Alright, going eight. What you got there? What'd you just draw? Rot Tide Gargantua. That's pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Didn't activate it. Fascinating. Okay. Alright, am I bleeding first or impulsing first? I don't have any other 5 drops and I only have one 6 drop and it doesn't matter if I draw the 6 drop, so we should be... We should be impulsing first. Okay, that is a lot of lands. Let's try... Some blood, see if we find a spell. Lantern Flare could be pretty cool. Adamant Will is super cool, actually. Are they dead? They're dead. Alright, I like it when our opponent's just dead. Twin Blade Geist is really nice. Whew, alright. 
Okay, their deck seems like a pretty reasonable matchup for ours. Blue, black, sack stuff. Okay, so does seeing... Does seeing Innocent... Tra I guess seeing Innocent Traveler actually points me away from Vampire Slayer. I was thinking this can attack through it, but realistically it's always going to flip. So I'd rather have fewer humans, all things else being equal. Lacerate Flesh to hit Gargantua and, like, Screaming Swarm seems pretty cool. Could see this coming in. I think given that they showed us Lantern Bearer and some biggish flyers, I might cut Griff Rider for Lacerate Flesh. Yep, new player. That's the that's the goal. That's what we're we're going for. Could also cut knife if they have a bunch of removal. They don't have that much removal though. We didn't really see much at least. Adding another expensive card does hurt a little bit. But I think it's going to trade even on mana plus up on blood enough times to be good. Sure. Alright, this is a hand where Wedding Invitation would be a bit better than Impulse. Persistent Specimen, you say. Hmm. Okay, kind of glad we have Blood Tokens available. I'm not going to be casting Impulse just yet. Please don't have a decent 3-drop. I guess... I could block most decent three drops. They're probably going to counter Belligerent Guest, which would be fine. If they then have Innocent Traveler, I'm in trouble against that curve. We'll see. If they don't have Innocent Traveler and Ballista Watcher just gets to kill their 1 1s, I'm very happy. Binding Geist is fine. Okay. Please don't kill this one. Thank you. Catapult fodder. All right, that one's not going to flip for a while at this rate. Last rate flesh is cool. All right, so I could attack with Ballista Watcher and plan to lacerate the Catapult fodder if they block. If they don't block, it's also fine. Or I might just need to lacerate flesh the Geist, I guess. They're unlikely to flip this anytime soon, given what we know about their deck. I don't think we saw any odd creatures in the other direction. They lacerate the guys, they can throw it on Ballista Watcher, but that doesn't actually matter. Yeah, I think it's just this. It's a lot of blood for me. Our deck is not a deck that flips Watcher very easily, but it's still nice to have, like, Guest plus Ping something as an option for next turn. There's an Instant Traveler, okay. Can I find an Abrade? Just once, please. Would absolutely love to see an abrade. Alright, so what am I doing here? We could start with impulse, we could start with blood. Um I just wanted to spend my mana a bit better, I guess, deck list. But I don't know, the blood seemed worth it, and if I flip tonight and ping, it's literally my entire turn. I guess I am then forcing my opponent to uh to deal with it or cast two spells or something. Maybe that would have been better. Yeah, we waste our last rate flesh and they turned out to immediately have the Innocent Traveler, which of course we didn't know was going to happen. But in retrospect, in retrospect, that maybe wasn't the best. All right, let's hit something that removes this or we could hit two more lands. All right, let's go with some blood then. All right, we may be dying to Innocent Traveler because I made a... A mistake here. Crap. Alright, well this draw was also terrible. I think we're going to have to be getting him in game 3 here. We could also draw Lantern Flare. Lantern Flare could absolutely be Giganto Lightning Helix and get us back into this. I think Sacrifice is not how we win the game. I think drawing Lantern Flare or Braid is how we win the game. And this also helpfully means that Catapult Fodder is probably not flipping this turn. 
Stitch resistance fine. Yeah, that might have been a... I'll, I'll punt myself for that one. I still think the punt tracker is probably broken, which is probably the same reason the deck overlay is broken. But we'll do it. Do it out of habit. Keep up your good habits. Wedding Invitation plus a Braid could be good here. Yeah, we haven't actually cast Lantern Flare yet, which is disappointing. All right, Wedding Invitation looking worse. That is a lot of lands. There we go. All right, that's a good card. So now we get to kill Malicious Invader, and we're kind of right back in it. Love it. Love to see it. We could play Geist and then Flare the Invader for one less, which I guess is better, because then we get to use Blood as well. It's Mega Helix, or in this case, just regular Helix. All right, we are back to not completely dead. It's not a good situation. They do have Screaming Swarm, which will kill us in a hurry if they can find it. We don't have any reason to kill it at this point. Do I think I'd side in second invitation of the play? I might consider it. These games have been more racy than I was expecting them to be. I mean, it's not that. It's just a choice between two slightly different outcomes. But I think that playing out the two drop and being able to block stitches system if they have removal is good. Alright, still just a lot of bad things happening to us here. Time to start attacking with Geist. We gotta kill them sooner or later. Boy, it really was very good that we had a... It was very good that we had the sheer number of blood tokens that we did there. Guess we throw this on Geist. And I think we hold and hope we're going to start making blood. Maybe we could draw Falconrath Celebrants. Actually, if we draw Olivia's Attendance, this is bad. I probably should have played this land for Olivia's Attendance, since the games we actually win from this position are likely to be games where Olivia's Attendance does something. Oh, I should change my record at some point. Let's change the record after this match. Okay, Skyrope Scob is down. What do I need to do here? Hungry Ridge Wolf is not going to do it, huh? So we're going to two, and there's no draw in my deck that beats Skywarp Scob from here. Um, there's Reckless Impulse could find a Wedding Invitation, but we don't have Falcon Wrath Celebrants, so we're just going to die in two turns no matter what. Wedding Invitation King in us at most one life. Yeah, it's been tough, been tough for this wedding. It's been an interesting wedding for this person we're going to scoop here. All right. So, last game of this match, then we'll update the record, and what did we see from our opponent? Well, we saw we should just flip a list of Watcher. That was probably an error. Don't know if it cost us the game or not. We were really flooded there, but still an error. Against Catapult Fodder, Sure Strike seems pr pretty reasonable. If they're doing, like, X5s a lot, this seems pretty good. I think I might play this over Adamant Will. Just haven't seen much actual removal from them, and a lot of the black removal doesn't care about Adamant Will anyway. Unclear, Tammy, unclear. Okay, now that we have Lacerate Flesh, we could ditch the Knife as well. Ditch Knife and put in Winning Imitation, that seems pretty reasonable. Okay, try that. Uh, Man Legs, Libby's Attendance is an insane bomb. It's an insane bomb, we definitely play it. Like, we got to plenty of lands that game. If, we'd had a, if we had an Olivia's Tendence on turn 6 in that game instead of, you know, random 3-drops, we were in potentially winning shape. Olivia's Tendence is very, very good. More specimens. Alright, Imitation, find me a 3-drop, please, or a 2-drop even. Something to go with Puppeteer, please. Gosh darn, alright. So we're not impulsing here because impulse is gonna not you know we have we have four drops for next turn, but definitely definitely having some poor draws here in this particular match. 
And looks like our opponent is, okay, not holding up Siphon Essence, that's cool. Binding guys dies to Ballista Watcher. Love to see that. There's our three drop, just a smidgen late, just a smidgen late. All right, let's hope they don't curve an Innocent Traveler again. Been really impressed by Innocent Traveler against our deck. Desperate Farmer is fine. This uh, Persistent Specimen attack is interesting. I wonder what that's about. Maybe it's just the... Oh, to flip Desperate Farmer? Yeah, I don't think I care if they flip Desperate Farmer here, right? I think I just want to get this 1-1 off the board, given that something's going to die pretty fast anyway. If they have to give away a card to do it, I'm pretty happy to do this. Okay. More lands. So we can kill the Geist and cast Reckless Impulse. I guess we cast Reckless Impulse, see what we hit. We could also hit a Braid and just start attacking them. Or Belligerent Guest, which I would be happily, happy to cast as well. Okay. Multiple reasonable spells is Pog. I like Twin Blade Geist. And then we got the Fierce Retribution for next turn as well, which is nice. We could also ping something. Actually, I guess we just hold. We hold, threaten a Fierce Retribution and attacker, and then just ping something if they don't attack. We're not going to flip uh, Ballista Watcher because we cast Reckless Impulse. Silvery, we cast we cast a spell this turn. Um, but I think I do like holding here. Like, if we give up Fierce Retribution, I think I'm actually okay with that. And we get a kill spell. Which is nice as well. It is a little sad to lose Geist plus Puppeteer. Uh, I don't know. I think with with I think literally having no spells is pretty bad. That's that's just my uh, my earnest opinion here about what's going on. All right, so you're just gonna swing with Geist. Um, all right, is there any difference between? I mean, I should just tap and kill it. They could have a Serpentine Ambush, I guess, or an Undying Malice. I guess Undying Malice gets us either way. All right, let's just kill it off here. Sure. All right, card advantage achieved. There's Innocent Traveler. All right, that one can die. That one can just die right now. A Braid? Olivia's Attendance. Okay. That seems good for later. And we are just going to kill off their stupid 1-3 here. Lose a card, but that's fine. Reckless Simple still stopped a whole attack step and then drew us a removal spell. Yeah, Livy's Attendance with Lifelink does seem pretty silly. Now our opponent could have some way to kill it, but, you know, we'll put him to the test. And if they have, if they want to get the Ballista Watcher out of the way, we get Attendance for free. We are going to block the Lifelinker here. Ballista Watcher has done its work at this point. Yeah, I mean, if they leave, if they seem to be leaving up a counter spell, we can work around that pretty well. This doesn't look to be leaving up a counter spell. All right. Should I play this land out? I don't really have a strong reason to play the land out. I guess Olivia's Tense wants wants mana, but not really. Yeah, we'll just go attendance here. We have not seen removal that actually kills the side of their deck yet, so let's force them to have it. And yep, time to make a lot of blood, gain a lot of life, and hopefully win ourselves game three here. Stitched Assistant's not going to help you. Oh, are they sacking? All right, this is good. You'll love to see this one, chat. We're digging. Digging has been called. All right, I think I just gained six while the getting's good. I mean, it doesn't really matter how much toughness they have against Olivia's attendance. But yeah, that's, that one's a better blocker. I probably would have kept that one. You do love to see some good old-fashioned desperation. All right, time to Celebrance. I think we just double spell. Nah, Celebrance is better with Creepy Puppeteer. Is it? It's not really. Yeah. 
All right, I'm gonna celebrants just use blood, I think. Given that this can't be blocked by their one creature anyway. Yeah, villager also has menace for puppeteer. It is true. It is true. Could have could have used the blood first, I guess, knowing that our plan was to play celebrants. Yeah, if we had drawn Twimbly guys, we would have wanted to play it. It's true. Alright, Doom to Center, I can just ping down. Yeah, this looks rough for our opponent here. Let's let's be careful, of course. There are there are some big bombs in this format, but it does not look promising for our opponent. So we can just double ping the assistant and attack. We could also ping the dissenter. I think I like ping the dissenter. Yeah, I mean, it, I think I think it's great. I like I like that the card just makes a comical amount of blood. Yeah, let's just get rid of this. Get some tasty blood. Yeah, Kamal, English is a beautifully flexible language. I'm going to swing with Celebrants here. I It's a 2-4 menace. I don't mind trading off his Dish Assistant. If it makes them unable to chump block the attendants for a turn anyway. Alright, now I think we go with Menace over making additional blood. We don't really need additional blood. Uh, I mean... I guess I'm wary of Grizzly Ritual in the sense that, yes, I guess they can kill Livy's attendants, maybe. Hmm, do we turn on Skywarp Scob? No, they have plenty of creatures. We did not turn on Skywarp Scob. Uh, did it as mail? I, I didn't want them blocking my Livy's attendants with their Doom to center. I didn't want them, I wanted them to take six this turn. Alright, let's uh let's use some blood first, see if we come up with anything. Lacerate flesh. I think this is just puppeteer, send with puppeteer plus menace villager. They can double block puppeteer, which is a little awkward. Oh yeah, I guess Olivia does have menace. Sure, sure. I don't know. I think spending three mana to, to get through one of their resources versus having to spend six mana to get through one of their resources. We could also double ping Zombie Swing. Everything has Menace. Yeah, I guess we really don't need to cast anything here. We can just kind of keep hitting them and then wait on Puppeteer for later. Yeah, it's pretty hard for them to beat Puppeteer like they lose with Grizzly Ritual here. I think I like double ping Swing. And then we flip anyway. Flipping is nice too. Okay, go up to 20 blood. So, Blood Vile Purveyor with Haste is the only thing that scares me now. There it is. <sighs> yeah, about the Olivia's Attendance term, we decided to ping the Dissenter. We just had infinite options, and they were all kind of equally game-winning, I think. But the, the scenario you have to play around there is if they kill your Attendance. And if they kill the Attendance, I really want a second creature on board. Hence, killing the Dissenter and playing a creature over just double-pinging their 3-2. If I double-ping the 3-2, I get to attack for a bunch, but then if they kill Attendance, I just have a 2-4 on the board. I guess it ended up, um, and they have a 2-2 two -two versus what happened, which was, well, I guess they ended up with a 2-2, two -two, ended up with a 2-3 Menace, which is better than, yeah, same as a 2-4 Menace, but it can flip. Hmm, yeah, maybe you're right. Anyway, doesn't matter now. And I'm going to update the record. Three one, good start. This deck seems very solid, and we're having, like, you know, our draws have been slightly awkward on average. 
in the sense of would love to have a couple more two drops. There we go. That hand has two drops. And if we get a land, we get the Ridgewolf into Villager Curve, which is great. All right, Twin Blade Geist can block Ragged Recluse for free, so I'm going to go there, especially since we don't have any... Uh... Wow, all right, Twin Blade Geist pulling its weight for sure. All right, I think I just play the other Geist here rather than Impulsing for now. If we Impulse and, like, miss on lands, it's just awful. And I think I just like building out our board a little bit. Do I attack with Geist? I think I attack with Geist here too. Yeah. They missed a land drop themselves. All right, opponent's missing lands and I'm hitting lands, so now things are looking real bad for them. I think Aaron Paul was named after me to answer your question, Dungle. All right, uh, Villager Rider, Villager Rider, Villager Rider, Villager Rider, Villager Rider. Not attack with anything bigger than Rider next turn, so it's not gonna train. So I guess Villager just blocks Recluse, so we'll do that. Also getting the day-night cycle going when our opponent is mana screwed seems good. All right, now they get to flip both the Recluses. I guess given they're flipping both Recluses, maybe I'd rather have had Rider. But I'm actually fine, because we get to Lantern Flare or something now. Ooh, Adamant Will is also kind of nice. Huh. So we're like a little bit short of doing what I want to do. I could attack with a Twin Blade Geist. Like the hope is I attack with Twin Blade Geist and they double block for some reason, but that's obviously never going to happen. So the question is just now what do I do with myself? It's honestly pretty tough. Um, so Lantern Flare and just attack with Fearful Villager is an option, but doesn't sound great. I think I'd rather cast this when I have more creatures down, all else being equal. I could Reckless Impulse. If I miss on lands, again, it's miserable, and I'm kind of giving up the chance to just get another creature down. But it seems pretty important to hit lands here. I think I should impulse. I think I'm supposed to impulse and take the risk. Okay, Olivia's attendance is looking kind of sad, but that's fine. And now it's time to go for an... I was going to say all-out attack, but it should just be Geist Villager. Um, I don't know if we need to keep our defenses up. Our opponent's at 14. And if they don't block, we can just Lantern Flare and Odia Switch, and it's fine. This is the attack, yeah. They can't block both. If they block Villager, I'm happy to trade Adamant Will for one of their guys and deal them two damage. Seems reasonable enough. Sorry, ladies attendance. Was not your day to shine. Okay, so Gluttonous Guest means this might finally be the Vampire Slayer matchup. Might finally be that. Okay, so we can go for a few different things here. So we can go Ridgewolf, Flare the Guest, Attack with Villager. That's one option. We can just put a Ceremonial Knife on a Twin Blade Geist and start beating down. That doesn't seem as good. I think I want to just cast two things here. I can also just kill Odious Switch instead. I guess killing Odious Switch is Odious Switch is just a better card than Geist once on the board here, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think Odious Switch is a better one to kill. Lantern Flare, quite the card. Second color shows itself. Okay, that one's fine. Found a land for celebrants. I guess this is an attack with. Hmm. Ridgewolf just bounces off of guest. I could. So I could play knife, equip Geist, attack with Ridgewolf Geist. And then re-equip knife. I think just playing Celebrants is better, right? Because then I have Rider Knife next turn if I draw land. And Celebrants is just a good attacker no matter what. 
Yeah, I think this is just celebrants. And the hodl. Old Rutstein, all right, powerful. Okay, Old Rutstein gets rid of Bleed Dry. You don't mind that. Yep, I think we I think we have officially found the Vampire Slayer matchup. Okay, so ah, thanks, Charlie. Now what? Okay, so I think we are now into... I think we're now in the swing with everything part of the game. So, like, knife, equip to Geist, attack with literally everything. They can eat two creatures, I guess. If they eat two creatures, we hit them for ten. But they do get to eat two creatures, which is scary. Um, could also equip Geist and just attack with Geist plus Celebrants. Either we deal them a bunch of damage or we kill old Rutstein. Rustine? However you say that. Villager! Villager can get eaten if they block it with two things. Getting the other half of guys seems fine. Yeah, I think we just go all in here, especially with Griff Rider coming down and forcing a removal spell out of them. And with like haste cards in our deck. I think I just like going in and getting them. We leave and we leave with two menace creatures on our board. In addition to everything else. I guess if we don't attack with twin blade geist, does it really change anything? They still can only eat one creature and we leave a geist on board. This is actually we put them to three instead. So they can like double lock celebrants, block a wolf, take six go to nine, but we kill something. Oh man, this is too much time. I don't have time for this. Alright, let's get him. Alright, and we're taking out the... I think we take out Guest over Socialite if they make this block. If they double block Villager, they're dead. Oh, they gain one life off of Guess, so they're not actually dead. Okay, they're not dead anyway with this block, but this leaves a Geist on the board. So I don't think this is correct. Okay, so we're gonna be taking out Gluttonous Guest here for sure, because it gains life. Nope. Okay. This seems like the correct block to me. Super tricky position. Alright, Guest is going down. Use a bit of blood. They discard an actual spell. Interesting. Put him to three. Make some blood. Kill a thing. Play Griff Rider. Alright, so Griff Rider plus... Plus knife is lethal. If they have land, Tox Rail we lose. Flourishing Hunter. That's beatable. That is considerably more beatable. So we've still got Griff Rider doing good stuff. Alright, so Twin Blade Geist. Are they dead to Twin Blade Geist on Griff Rider? They are, right? I think this is lethal. Because, yeah, okay. They knew it was lethal. Thank you, opponent, for doing the math for me. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay. So, Vampire Slayer matchup. Have we finally found it? 
The rituals being three twos was actually pretty good there, but we saw double gluttonous guest and the three three vampire. Ritual can block odious traveler sometimes. Yeah, I think we're on slayers. Um, and sure strike seems perhaps a bit better than adamant will against. Stuff like Rustine or Double Blocks against Twin Blade Geists. Hmm. Didn't see any hard removal from them. They I'm sure have some, but. Actually, Wedding Invitation seems like a good Wedding Invitation matchup, but Knife also seems good. Knife actually gives me decent attacks into their stuff a lot of the time. But I would love to make room for another Wedding Invitation, I'm just not sure where it goes. They milled a Bleed Dry, that's, yes, good call. Maybe Invitation over Impulse? Or Invitation over Adamant Will? That doesn't seem quite right. Actually, I think I want against Old Rustine. Do I just want Lacerate Flesh? Daybreak Celebrants could be a waiting Invitation, that's true. Daybreak Celebrants is a good attacker against them, though. But then it stops being a good attacker. I kind of think on the draw I want Daybreak Combatants to be a Lacerate Flesh. And I don't know about Wedding Invitation. I guess Wedding Invitation on the draw, on the draw Reckless Impulse is a little harder to use because you're just emptying your hand more slowly. All right, we'll try this. We'll try this. Yeah, sure strike is better against Hunter. That's true. Alruns didn't think of that until it was too late. Hmm. Yeah, Jet Setter. That's interesting too. We could we could think about bringing the flyer for game three if we get that far. Still not sure it's worth having the extra five drop in, but the. Other than the bleed dry, we didn't see that much defense. Green actually doesn't have that much random reach this set, does it? Taxidermist, that's very strong. And I think we're just killing that. Think, think it's worth shutting down any ramp. Also possibly shutting off black. Did not shut off black successfully, but okay. Well, we weren't gonna be able to abrade Rutstein anyway. Guess we'll just go with a belligerent guest here. Start making blood over Griff Rider. Guest forces me to use Wedding Invitation to actually punch through Rustine, but they might not block with it anyway. They'd probably block with it. Guest actually blocks Rustine. Yeah, we can eventually set up guest trading, Elrunds, but it doesn't really matter what order we play the cards in because they both have to attack. An invitation can nab us a counter. Yes, it can. Man, I've never cast this card. This is easily the most Aaron Gertler card in this entire set, and I've never cast it, which is very, very tragic. Lantern Flare. All right, can't use that one yet. All right, I think this is just Griff Rider. Still seems like they're not super likely to be attacking into me anyway, so I don't need to hold up Fierce Retribution. Yeah, I like Griff Rider setting up Wedding Invitation attacks here. Catapult Fodder is, of course, scary. All right, opponent milled their Bleed Dry again. If they cast Flourishing Hunter, it's going to be trouble. We're going to have trouble right here in River City. Catapult Fodder, not too scary. Okay, there's the Flourishing Hunter. It's actually not that bad. It does just die to Fierce Retribution, and we still get our attacks in here. And we got our Blood Token, all of which is great. Adamant Will is also pretty nice for later. Would that it were Sure Strike, but of course if it were Sure Strike, they would still be able to kind of get us by just double blocking or whatever. Yeah, it's very similar art for sure. All right. 
yeah, Wedding Invitation actually did look better than Reckless Impulse there. We're learning, learning all the time. Old Rutstein can be used to mill stuff. The question is if they attack with all this stuff, do I just kill Old Rustine? Hmm, so now they have Catapult Captain. Are they going to attack with everything, though? They are attacking with everything. Do I just kill Catapult Captain? I kind of think I just kill Catapult Captain here. Or Rutstein, but probably Captain. Yeah, Captain just burns out all my other removal. Hmm. Like with Lantern Flare, I'm not that mu on that much of a clock. Let's let's use the blood first. See if that helps. Okay, doesn't help me. Hmm. All right, let's let's just get rid of the Hunter. I'm a little bit worried about Undying Mel's, but it have to be the last card here. They've got blood up for mana. All right, we killed that. Rothstein doesn't matter that much, doesn't make flyers. Okay, so we can Lantern Flare the Weaver. Play Infantry Lantern Flare the Weaver, and then we have Adamant Will up to protect from any instant speed removal. That seems really good. That seems really good. Lantern Flare, real solid. Oh, whoops. Wait. No! Oh, we don't have Adam Will up. Oops. All right. Oh, well. I, I'm making that play either way. I don't think they have instant speed removal. Okay. Opponent continually not making insects, which is nice. Gluttonous guest, sure. Their clock is... This is the green-black toughness dex problem. We have a little bit of evasion, and their like whole thing just doesn't matter very much. Their clock is very slow, they're gaining a bit of life, but we're hitting them faster. Yeah, I, I was thinking, yeah, the land was a punt because I didn't realize we were going to be triple spelling this turn, so... It's okay, we can cast Olivia's Attendance now. Alright, Flippin' Recluse is fine. Alright, pretty sure we just attack with... Belligerent guest here to get the adamant will in. And get another blood token. Hmm. We could adamant will the guest like pre-combat just to pump up the Griff Rider. Then they can just double block it and we don't get our blood though, which seems sad. What about flipping Geist? I don't know. You mean turning infantry into enchantment by having them kill it? Uh, we could also blood the Twin Blade. That is a good call. Yeah, you know what? I actually like that play. I'm too addicted to getting too much value. Let's just let's just try this. This is a this is a play we gotta be watching for with this deck. All right, double strikey rider, and I think I still attack with gas because I still do want this blood. Hmm. Or we could put them to dead. Nah, let's just put them to dead with Adam Will next turn. They can gain up to two life with Guest if they flip. I guess they can attack with Witch and gain additional life. So this doesn't necessarily change our clock. Hmm. Interesting. I think I like the attack with both plan here. I think we, we're going to deal a bit of damage to them with Guest anyway. And I think any, any blood token is going to be really helpful for us here. And any of their creatures is something I'd be very happy to kill. Alright, let's get rid of old Rutstein here. Alright, so we don't get blood, but we do efficiently trade one from with a really good creature. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, y'all might be right, I don't know. It wasn't going to be lethal next turn, chat. Well, if they made blood off of Rutstein, it wasn't going to be lethal next turn. I guess there's no guarantee they make blood off of Rutstein. Okay, looks like we probably get there anyway. Probably. 
Well, I go for lethal, you could trade one for one. Exactly. Exactly. Y'all got it. Okay, so if we attack with everything, they can just double eat stuff. So I think we just attack with Rider and chill. Yeah, jungle, I was hoping that they would block, uh, would just like block with 1-1-4 one, one, or something like that. And not risk the double block. But they had no reason to risk the double block. It was probably not a great play. Um... Alright, so we can attack with infantry as well, just to put it in the graveyard. I don't think I like that play. Yeah, it's true, Stas. I guess there's part of me just uh, imagining that my opponent knows what I know. Do I hold this? I think I play the land out here. Okay, got him, but I will punt myself for, for that turn. I think there's there's a part of me that just always wants to accrue value and grind people out even when I'm not playing the grindy decks. I almost never play all in aggro just lethal you decks, and that's one of my weaknesses as a magic player. Also, Necrosis, I don't think I thank you for your resubscribe before. I think it was close enough to a pun. If, if all of chat disagrees and you guys are, are, are brilliant, of course, then what am I supposed to do? And Contemplato, I think I missed your follow during that intense match, but thank you. Thank you for the follow. Alright, so so far we are 2-0 against Black Green. And time to just the record. Deck's still working pretty well despite the pilot. Sleeves are hard carrying for sure. Okay, love seeing two lands of different colors and a bunch of spells and just clicking on that keep button. Also just love having three cantrips in addition to the 17 lands. Green, white, okay. Oh, now you're dueling. Alright, so we can go super into attack here. And then are we guesting or geisting? What do we think? Guest or geist? Guest or geist or villager? A lot of options. Let's say that we let's assume we draw the land for puppeteer. If we draw the land for puppeteer, then geist seems like by far the best thing to be doing, because our opponent's just gonna be dead. Okay, we're gonna geist. If they can't, if whatever creature they play can't block this next turn, then Creepy Pups here is going to end them. I don't think it's Villager. We are on 17 lands deck list. We got plenty of blood. We got a 6 drop. Wasn't very close. Sure. Yeah, I mean this is this is where Geist is supposed to be doing. Geist is supposed to be in <laughs> aggro decks on the play. It's it's possible that I actually boarded out. Chat, remind me if I forget. We're we're maybe trying to board out Geist on the draw in this matchup. Okay. Um I'm pretty down just trading for something here. I think I'm okay attacking. And just trying to keep their blockers down a little bit. And I guess we get rid of the wolf over the disciple here. I think that they're more likely to have werewolfy synergies than human synergies. Like they could have the 5 4 for 4 mana if you have a wolf card. Yeah, I mean, I think Feel for Villager is, like, close enough to being the thing. Alright, do I Villager or do I Belligerent Guest? I think Villager here, the fact that this... I guess this also blocks Darn Hard Disable if they have a human. I don't know. Four one. Yeah, you might be right, Clarin. What what synergies do humans actually have in this set? 
Alright, this smells like probably a clear shot. Huh, do I play out Puppeteer or do I wait and then they clear shot my thing and then I play Puppeteer the turn after? Interesting. Yeah, I like waiting. I like waiting. They're they're gonna definitely kill my werewolf here. Uh eh, jungle deck card is wildly unplayable IV, so a bit surprised to see it. Maybe they have it, but that, that's just not a very good card at all. So if they have clear shots, a good example of when Adamant Will is much better than Sure Strike. Mm-hmm. Good afternoon, Guardians. There it is. Sure. The blocking first is super risky, because that opens you up to Piercing Light, but our opponent uh, had a Heart of Steel. Hmm. That sounds like a fun standard combo primogenitor. I mean, not really, but a good against the odds deck. Alright, so this smells like probably Fierce Retribution, but whatever. Show it to me. Ah, eh, no, I'll runs. I, I find that trying to try hard like that just ends up distracting me more than it helps. I guess they could also have Oakshade Stalker. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, in that case, they didn't really have a choice to stay because they wanted to kill the 4-3, but I, I also hate being in that position. All right, they do have the Flourishing Hunter. The Flourishing Hunter, no life gain, classic. So, I think we're just distracting Geist here. Hmm. It's a little rough against removal, but we've already seen some of the removal. And this is just such a juicy chance, like, Distracting Geist is not going to get better than this. Look over there, quickly! Alright, please don't have another one. Hive Heart Shaman, yee! Okay. Well, I can kill that. Oh no. Oh no, surely you wouldn't. Wait, what's the 2 mana fight spell? No, there's reading? A little scary. Good to know about for game two. Oh, Lantern Lantern Flare exists, that's true. Daybreak Combatants. Okay, gonna assume they probably don't have Lantern Flare here. Witch's Web, I guess, is the other card to think about. Hmm, if they have Witch's Web, then it's a little scary. <sighs> but we can't really stop it, we don't have Fierce Retribution up. I mean, we can play Wedding Invitation and have that be like our player on Witch's Web play. But I kind of want to save Invitation for if they get the High Heart Shaman going, because we missed our land drop there. Eh. We can, in theory, beat Web with Wedding Invitation. Tough, 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 tough call. Alright, here we go with... Yeah, I like Combatants plus Invitation here. Hold on, I don't know. If they have Witch's Web, then it doesn't really help me that much. Alright, let's, let's, let's actually plan on doing this. Alright, Invitation comes down. We're just going to assume they have nothing. They never have anything here. They're just bluffing. Okay, they were in fact just bluffing. Alright, hopefully they don't have 5 mana worth of pump. Or 5 damage worth of pump. Ulvenwald Oddity doesn't quite kill us. We got unblockability. They don't have life gain that we know of. Boy, we are getting a lot of tense, difficult, like, turns and games here. Whew. A 
I kind of love it. I kind of love it. I like my long grindy games, but my like... This is perfect. Like, small aggro deck with a bunch of little decisions and little card draw thingies and... Nice. Okay, so big green deck. Distracting Geist actually looks awesome. We were thinking about sideboarding out, it would look like you're more aggressive, but I think I like Distracting Geist. Um, sure Strike seems better than, uh, well, hmm. Sure Strike seems better than Ceremonial Knife. I think their stuff is so big that we just need a way to kill it. Last Rate Flesh doesn't seem good. Wedding Invitation seems very good. The 3-3 three, three Flyer. Seems interesting, but again, what are we putting the 3-3 three, three Flyer in over? Like, what would be the cut for this? I kind of think Wedding Invitation just is our 3-3 three, three Flyer here. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to cut Falcon Wrath Celebrants. What is the cut here, though? Possibly just Reckless Impulse on the draw again? I think that's fine. Yeah, I was thinking about Geist, but I think Geist is actually amazing against Flourishing Hunter. Daybreak Combatants is really good once you have Double Invitation and Double Twin Blade Geist. Even just Daybreak, even without Invitation, Combatants plus Geist can break through a Flourishing Hunter, which is big. Maybe it's Mount on the draw, but what are we putting in over it? Another 2-drop? Probably not. Yeah, I think, I think I'm into setting up combo turns for like little chunks of damage, and I think Combatants does that pretty well. We'll see. Yeah, we can also cut cut a, cut a creature. I don't know, once you have the combat tricks and the wedding invitations, I kind of like having a high creature count. But maybe maybe we're supposed to take up Lizard and Guess for the 3 3 flyer, I don't know. Guess is also a nice blocker. Like something that just blocks Oakshade Stalker on curve is not is not bad. Not to mention another creature that actually gains me life with Wedding Invitation. I could easily see a game coming down to like a 5 point life swing off of Wedding Invitation plus, you know, Drogstool Infantry or something like that. Trying to get to 7 man leggings. Yeah, I think this is a good Daybreak Combatants deck. Daybreak Combatants is a red-white card. Much more than it is in any other color. Okay, almost keep Will Hand with Wedding Invitation, but not quite. Opponent also moles, that's nice. Okay, keeping six with Wedding Invitation, I think I'm in for it. Our opponent also mold again, does that change my mind? I don't th think so. I don't think so, I think we keep six. Odds of finding land, and the next two draw steps are like 70, 73% roughly. And then we mull to five. Yeah, I guess that's true. We do better on five than they do. 27% chance of not playing the game. It always sounds safe, but not having cards is also scary. All right, we'll keep this. Drew all the wedding invitations. Alright, getting to keep Reckless Impulse helps a lot. Alright, we'll stick with this. We'll dump the Geist and an invitation. Alright, <laughs> we're playing mini magic here. Our opponent has a Swamp. Okay. Swamp. Swamp is here. Swamp is now. Olivia's Attendance. Perfect, perfect double mulligan card for us. Having Fierce Retribution is good, though. And having a third land is very good. Pretty sure on Geist over Geist, Geist over Geist. They didn't have any creatures. They might continue to have no creatures. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably just Geist still. Our opponent's sideboard to another color? Are they just super color screwed? Always a mystery. Always a mystery. I guess Hive Heart Shaman, it makes sense they have three colors. I guess white could be their splash easily enough. They might just be missing black and hit their one splash planes. 
High Forge Shaman's going to be tough, but maybe we can fiercely retribute it. Ancient Lumber Knot. Okay. So they're doing this. Fascinating. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Very good hits. That's part of a jungle. All right. This is my fight spell. My say I'm all right spell. Saw Blade Slinger. Oh no! Wedding invitation. I'll give a nice for that. That's a that's a good that's a good one. Take that. Rough. Mmm. All right. The fact that we have Geist makes that play a little less suspicious. All right. We got our planes. That's good. Time to go belligerent guest and chill. I actually could have played Ridge Wolf there. I should have played Ridge Wolf there. That's dumb. I don't really care about them attacking me. I have Lantern Flare and Fierce Retribution. I am the beat down here, and playing this makes Lantern Flare much better. And we're now just suspiciously holding up two mana all the time, which is not exactly where I want to be. Awkward. Okay, well, that's my fault. All right, time to drop Olivia's attendance, I guess. That one doesn't die to clear shot. It does at night, but it's not nighttime, and it's not going to be nighttime for a while at this rate. And at this point, if you know, if they if we had a wolf and they tried to flip tonight, we would have fear retribution to defend us. Oh, wolf strike? Yeah, whatever. The the, the clear shot thing, you know, you know what I mean. No, that's fine. Didn't need that one. It was like handy, but I don't think we needed it. Opponent should really be attacking now. They are being very conservative. I guess I can't blame them. We both mold, they win the long game. They don't really have a great reason to be aggressive. Guess we just start jamming creatures here. Still just don't have any attacks. Why not clean the board before play attendant? I have no idea what you mean, Manthos. Actually, just no idea what you mean. <laughs> How am I supposed to be clearing the board there? Actually, that was dumb. We had we had Lantern Flare for Lumber Knot. That's stupid. Oh, that was a terrible play. We, we had a great attack that turn, actually. Alright, we have to play around the stupid Wolf Strike card all the time now. If I just killed the Lumber Knot, we'd be in great shape. Um, it would have taken a while, Manthos. I think I just play Attendance as soon as I can play Attendance, and if I can successfully trade Attendance for, like, two of their creatures and make six blood, I'm probably great. And the longer I wait to play Attendance, the more likely it is that they actually find either, like, a Flur if they if they play Flourishing Hunter and they have their, uh, their Wolf Strike card, it's just, like, so devastating. Okay. No. I'm going to say no to that one. Thank you. So this works even if they have a removal spell for my creatures, because it's still going to be three damage. Actually, chat, does this check on on uh, on cast? Or does it check on resolution? I feel like it checks on resolution, right? It, yeah, it's got to check on resolution. Yeah, okay. Well, that was nice. That That helped a lot. So now they're kind of forced to kill the Geist. Now they can't kill the Geist anymore, so now they're just toast. 
Yeah, that was that was clean. Uh, probably Arashka. I, I've never been good with the whole like technical magic terminology thing. Just playing H. I mean, they are a three-color deck. Mestastic. I could see if they're splashing for a sufficiently good bomb. If they've got like an Edgar or something. But no, Nature's Embrace is not a very good card on either side. Wolf Strike. No. Oh, we just retribute them and then we win. Okay. Slightly awkward if they draw exactly Flourishing Hunter or some other similarly sized creature, but I think the two for one's too good there to pass up. All right, that's the bomb. We still win, though. We still win. Almost certain we just win immediately, right? This is a... Uh... Yeah, we win. Okay, cool. Close one, close one. Almost got me. Adam and Will. Thank you, Adam and Will. Honestly, even without Adam and Will, this is still a pretty tough situation for them, given that, you know, two of our creatures that are the best creatures we have come back as auras. But yeah, Caretaker has not turned out to be that great in my experience. Alright, we'll just take the win here. All right, time for a bathroom break chat. I will be right back. Pretty good record so far, not gonna get too excited. Just gonna play out each game. All right, going right back in. Yeah, Arab Caretaker is probably 
I don't even think it's in the top, in my personal top five list of rares I don't want to see. It's just a little too easy to beat it with evasion or something. Yeah, it is sixth in game in hand win rate, and I think all five of the cards in that are above it are all clearly better. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Jeff. Nubby GG, thanks for the follow. And Carl, thanks for resubscribing while I was in the bathroom. Huh. I think so. I think I have enough blood sources. This is fine. We've got Knife, we've already got Guest, which on the play has a pretty decent chance of connecting at least once. Especially with our tricks and stuff. We have some 2-drops we could draw. We have Wedding Announcements we could draw. Super in for just keeping our, keeping our stuff on the play. Okay. All right, well, this is not great. I think it's Guest Over Geist here. Just because I really want to make some blood, and the sooner I cast Guest, the more likely it is I get to make some blood. All right, opponent is... No reason to attack here, I don't have the trick. We'll just Geist. All right, gotta find some spells soon. Or Falcon Wrath, uh, yeah, Falcon Wrath Celebrant specifically would be great. Any spells, pretty good. Oh, there's so many Apprentice Sharpshooters, opponent. I am impressed. Belligerent Guest again. All right, well, we're just looking for Wedding Imitation at this point. Or Olivia's Attendance. Fear of Death, that's fine. Milling a Flourishing Hunter seems good. Vile Spawn Spider, okay. Well, we gotta kill them pretty quickly. Vile Spawn Spider is a problem. Alright, um... Huh. It's not It's not a good situation, exactly, that we find ourselves in. How can I help? Alright, can't really do anything about this. Let's try to draw Olivia's Attendance here. Yeah, man. And playing this one out while they have a Vile Spawn Spider, I'm definitely going to be, even if we're super dead, I'm going to wait and see what they have in their deck. Seems valuable. Okay, is this presumably like a Massive Might or something? Oh no, it's just training. That also makes sense. Okay, uh... Not very excited to block here. Let's see if we can make some blood and get going. Get stuff going. Millipede, yeah, none of this is surprising. Pretty standard blue-green stuff. Milled two more creatures, we hit Twin Blade Geist. Okay. Here goes. I got some chump blockers for the Millipede. They are going to train their sharpshooters again, so we're almost certainly dead, but we're trying. Adamant Will is interesting. Adamant Will lets me get rid of the Millipede at least, maybe. I think I go ahead and play this land. Opponent shows us another fear of death, mills that land. We need to become Aaron Libanks, thanks for the follow. That looks delicious, Tammy. Enjoy eating it. I'm not gonna eat any of it right now. Alright. Yeah, I think we just have to kind of go for this block and we kill need thing. To become Aaron Gertler tonight, Jeff. That's the goal. I think. <sighs> I guess putting Twin Blade Geist in the graveyard somehow might be our best bet. Yeah, I mean, it's also nice to learn about tricks if they have them. Okay, we've learned about a trick. I guess we should have done that pre-combat, so that's a, a pun. If they had... Well, we got our block in. 
Yeah, it depends if they, we think bounce or counter is more likely. And I guess bounce is actually more likely, so I think the play was fine. All right, if we rip Lantern Flare, maybe Inspired Idea is nice. It's a spicy one. Wedding Invitation. Okay. Come on, Wedding Invitation. You've got a lot of work to do. No, not like that. All right, well, we do get a free hit, which is nice. Um... I mean, I don't think the creatures line up that well against us. They're fine. What's what's mostly not fine is the number of lands we've drawn here. All right, so we can put the Geist on the Guest. Swing, pop, invitation. We're not dead on the backswing. We take four, four, five, two, one. Four, four, five, two, one. That's not technically lethal. If they flip a creature for Taxidermist, it's lethal, but yeah, we're going to hope they don't. And we can draw another Wedding Invitation to maybe get there. Let's make two blood, yep. Two blood is nice. I guess we could actually, if we had played a land out beforehand, we could have, oh, we don't have Sure Strike in the deck yet, so that wouldn't have worked. There was a world where we could have like used the first Strike hit to try and find a combat trick to get more life off the second Strike hit, which would have been funny. All right, if we can find a two drop. Reckless Impulse. Okay, well, that's our two drop then. Celebrant's Fearful Vilger. All right, neither of those helps very much. And they did not mill a creature. So, Crawling Infestation is fine. That's upkeep, sure. Lantern Flare could be interesting. Wow, that's a lot of fear deaths. I mean, they've they've built the deck the way it's supposed to be built. They even have the Grohl Knock. Uh oh. Oh, and they pumped the Taxidermist. All right, that's uh, that's curtains for us. There is there is no no hope. Oh, we eh. Mild Punt probably should have waited for them to mill their last twelve. We, we should have we should have let them mill three more cards there off of Crawling Infestation plus Spider. I was kind of getting fed up with the game, but I should have let them mill more. Anyway, Sure Strike looks great against high toughness creatures. And what's a good cut here? Griff Rider, probably, against Endless Apprentice Sharpshooters. Does not seem very good. Uh, I don't know about Flesh Mistesk. It kills Vile Spawn Spider. Um, what does Sanctify do? It hits Crawling Infestation? Crawling Infestation's a really bad card. I don't really mind our opponent having Crawling Infestation. I guess uh, it hits a Fear of Death. Sanctify does hit Fear of Death, which is something. It's something. I don't think it's enough. Like, we're sort of... It's, it's you know... We could just play another creature instead of playing Sanctify. I don't think we bring an Ancestral Anger. It doesn't, it doesn't do very much. Like, we're getting trampled to our creatures that are still too small to attack through their stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, Sanctify will work to find targets. The question is just, is it, is it worth the times when we draw it and we're like, wow, I wish you were a two-drop creature? Or whatever the case may be. Second Invitation is definitely coming in. That's that's an easy choice. Um, we got the play, so I think I kind of want to keep Impulses. I think Knife probably comes out. It, well, I guess it is really good exactly on Belligerent Guest to get through Apprentice Sharpshooter, which is not nothing. Alright, maybe we cut a... Could cut Adamant Will. They don't have any really hard removal. I think this is just worse than Sure Strike. And we have Double Invitation now. Okay, I think we do this. Let's see, Knife. Knife might be bad. I'm going to think about Knife as a card to cut, and of course in the draw things might be very different. Unsatchmo, thanks for the follow. All right, the sand looks pretty good. Missing a two drop, but that's okay. I put it mold, which is great. Ballista Watcher at least does a good job of picking off little crawling sensation bugs. If it comes to that. And a braid kills Vile Spawn Spider, which is delightful. Oh, 
Femalon Belligerent Guest. Taxidermist. That one is getting abraded unless we find a 3-drop. Found a 2-drop. So I believe we are still on the abrade the taxidermist plan here. It is a 2-drop that gets pretty big once we cast Ballista Watcher. That's tough. They mulliganed, though. I think given that they mold, I'm going to kill this. Bolt the bird, yeah. That's the that's the vibe. Like, if the best creature they can cast here is Apprentice Sharpshooter... Alright, we steal Cloud Spirit. Still fine. Still fine. Okay, is this Ballista Watcher or Infantry Ridgewolf? I kind of think... I mean, there's a chance they just don't play a spell, which would be cool. I'm kind of down for Infantry Ridgewolf just to get an attack in through the Spirit next turn if after I cast Watcher. Yeah, I think we go double two drop. I guess we got a little punished if they play Sharpshooter after this, but it's not like I was going to be attacking with Watcher into Steel Clad Spirit anyway. I think Watcher ideally is like the last spell you play, so that you're more likely to flip it naturally. Toxic Scorpion is totally fine. My opponent's got a good defensive deck going here. I'm glad we have a lot of wedding invitations to break through that sort of thing. Olivia's attendance looks like hot gas. But for now, let's just go with uh, Watcher. Yeah, Olivia's attendance against Triple Fear of Death <laughs> seems like a pretty good place to be to me. So if they have some way to, like, bounce the Ballista Watcher, then Hungry Bridge Wolf could get eaten. So I'm hoping they don't do that. But you didn't see that in game one. This, this would have been a reason to hold, hang on and see those last 12 cards, though. Alright, this makes me think they can bounce the Watcher. No, this is fine. Okay. Great. Happy with that trade. All right, we got Molgraf Millipede. Molgraf Millipede. You know, I feel like I would have just traded off the Steel Clad Spirit if I was going to play Molgraf Millipede, but whatever. Mill no creatures. Classic Millipede. <laughs> oh dear. All right, did not find our land, so I believe the play here is just going to be... Uh, Cast Reckless Impulse and ping the Scorpion. Obviously, we could just flip it, but I, I do want to hit that 6 land for Levy's Attendance. Or we could just not do that. Alright, I guess I'll just play a 3-2 then. Whatevs, whatevs, we'll get there. So many spammers lately. All right, we block a millipede. I'm down to block a millipede, I think. Eh. Actually, no. Why would I block this millipede? Do I care about this millipede? I don't think I care about this millipede. Belligerent Guest just seems better. They could have another millipede. Uh, did they mill any wolf strikes last game? That's a good question. Let's actually look that up. Flourishing Hunter. Okay. All right, mine is better. My version of that card is better. Ceremonial Knife. Okay. All right, looks like it might just be double blocking a Hunter. Which is fine. Uh, I think that's a little bit too general, man leggings. All right, let's look at the graveyard real quick from last game. My data. Latest draft. Details. On its graveyard at the end of the game contained what? All right, I guess I'm into this block now. I don't want to take too much chip damage here. All right, opponent is flooding out a little bit. It is now nighttime, meaning that Ballista Wielder gets to start pinging stuff. All right, do I jam attendance or just hold up Ballista Wielder and cast a 4-3 Menace? Could also just Ballista the Flourishing Hunter and hit them for a bunch of damage, huh? That's another option. 
Are they at 23, though? That doesn't seem very good. Mm, let's just cast Attendance. Just hit them while they're down. Let's make board when in doubt. Alright, so opponent's graveyard at the end of the game contained. Alright, doesn't matter now. But let's check it out real quick. They had a bunch of fear of death. They did have a wolf strike. We did see one wolf strike in game one, I thought so. Okay, on the draw, does anything change? Uh, am I cutting a reckless impulse? Am I cutting a ceremonial life? Am I cutting a distracting geist? Anything like that? They certainly don't seem to have a lot of ways to punish sure strike. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like strike over knife, especially because sure strike helps belligerent guests get in, which also generates blood. Let's go for this, see how it goes. One stack is pretty scary, but we've got some scary starts ourselves. Okay. A little on the defensive side, but Lantern Flare is a good card. Yeah, at some point we'll find some blood. Vile Spawn Spider would love to retribute that one. No training for you, bud. Oh, okay. Maybe training for them. Oh god, not like this again. <laughs> Alright, it makes Lantern Flare better. That's something. Ooh, they milled their other Viral Spawn Spider, which is actually great. Okay, they're also happy to trade damage, which I like, I think, in general. One blue... What's one blue? Cobbled Lancer. Okay, that's strong. Alright, drew a spell. Pog. Love spells. Okay, what's down to... Not a ton of material left. Alright, so it's all going to come down to whether we can stall them out, find attendance. Because other than a single wolf strike, they don't seem to have a way to kill attendants, and attendants can kind of beat Vile Spawn Spider. Pretty sure. Toxic Scorpion pumps Cobbled Lancer. That's like. I feel like not at all a card you cared about pumping. Whatever. Take my medicine. You got a fear of death? All right. Mill not a creature. Olivia's attendance. Okay. Olivia's attendance seems very good. Um, I'm gonna kill. V I could kill Vile Spawn Spider or Cobbled Lancer. I think the correct answer is Vile Spawn Spider. Hmm. There's also Toxic Scorpion, which in combination specifically with Wolf Strike could get me. I think it's Spider over Lancer. I just like keep them playing the long game here. Plus, getting an attack in here is not the worst thing. It's Lantern Helix, oh my god! Alright, nope, that's not the right block. This is the right block. Don't think it's incredibly... I guess they could have Mulgra exactly land Millipede here, at which point I will wish I blocked with the other thing. Alright, I wish I, had, I wish I had not blocked the way I blocked. Millipede hits one creature, so it does not get past Attendance. Pog. Alright, come on, Olivia's Attendance. Turn this one around for us, please. No attacks. They have not played Massive Might yet. They have not played Wolf Strike yet. We'll be out of Massive Might range in a second here. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I shouldn't have blocked with the uh, the guy there. I don't think it was important enough. Oh no, they just drew it. They just drew it, chat. They just drew it. They just top decked it. I smell it, chat. They definitely are just looking up how the death touch interaction works. Okay, or not. Um, all right, do I play around massive might? I think I'm down to. Let's see, massive might. Does that kill me if I block the other way? All right, are we playing around massive might? If we want to play around massive might, we block cobble dance or block millipede. Take five. If they have the trample for millipede, we go to literal one. And I actually can't win at that point unless I top deck a creature, so I feel like I have to just hope they're in desperation mode here. Meaning block millipede, block sharpshooter. Yeah, I don't think we could win playing around massive might. I think it's gonna be a little we could draw a wedding invitation. That's that's one way to win playing around massive might. I actually think I'm kind of in to try and draw. We take five, next turn they attack with two five power creatures. We kill the scorpion, we sure strike something. This actually just loses the game if we draw a land and they have like any creature though. Alright. Alright, we're gonna we're just gonna hope they have nothing here. Okay. Looks like they, they were doing the mouse thing to try and fool us. They did not fool us. We were not fooled. We were brave. It is now nighttime, but I'm gonna start using blood here yeah getting an extra draw it's a four mana draw so it's not like it matter that much but it is it is a real thing all right am i casting impulse here i guess i'm casting impulse actually no i think just pinging the scorpion is going to be valuable here and holding up sure strike and a ridge wolf am i ping the scorpion now no i want to hold sure strike okay All cards have cycling one. You love to see it. That's a cute way to put it, actually. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. That was... Thank you, Olivia's attendance. To whoever was asking, is attendance too expensive? The price is right, chat. The price is right. <laughs> Never didn't have it. Time to update that record command. This is like any other draft. This is not a special draft in any way. You can lose the last two and go 6-3 and be happy with the 6-3, but... You know, we'll try not to. I've never actually won one of these qualifier events. Back when they were 10 wins to get in, I won 9 twice. But I've never actually gotten there in one of these. Final boss. Good hand. Lantern Bearer? Ooh, all right. The game is afoot. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Jack. Mixed Master, thanks for the follow. All right, blue-white, good color combination. Possible syncopate incoming. No syncopate incoming, beautiful. The Protor on Satchmo, or whatever they are going to be calling it by the time it happens, but I will I will think of it as the Protor for a while, and then probably eventually think of it as the set championship, because I can't hold on to old things forever. Pow. I like getting a bit of value here if they have the Siphon. Nice, nice combo. Poderoso. All right, is this Griff Rider, Belligerent Guest, or Reckless Impulse trying to hit land for a braid? Ah. I'm thinking attack and then cast Belligerent Guest here. Nice.
Wretched Throng, alright, that's pretty good. Potentially. Nice. Alright, opponent's getting some value here, but we have a lot of value in our locked up in our hand if the game lasts long enough. Okay, now that we've drawn a land, casting Reckless Impulse is much less risky. So I think I'm going to do that. We could jam Griff Rider as well. And I think I want to hit that fifth land for Celebrants, because Celebrants looks like a pretty clean two for one at, the, at this point. Okay. That'll work. Gonna just keep attacking here. If they block both creatures, I'll abrade a Stitch Assistant, blocking my guest, get in for some Trample, get a Blood. If they don't block anything, we can kind of hold up and wait and see if they enchant something. Alright, I'm down. Definitely still abrading an assistant after this one, so we still got our blood. And now they have nothing to enchant briefly. Yeah, and we've got as many enchantments and unblockability thingies as we do. Every point of damage matters a lot. Blood achieved. Wretched Throng is... A fine magic card, but it's not going to win them this game. Storm Chaser Drake, on the other hand, that's a scary one. But not that scary. Not really that scary in the end. Play Guess here to save it. I think I attack with Ridge Wolf, actually. I should just wait on the Ridge Wolf attack until I find a... Uh... I should certainly just wait on the Ridge Wolf attack until I can find a... What do you call it? A wolf. It'll get in sooner or later. Alright, so really hoping to dodge, uh, what do you call it? The hexproofy thing? Ballista thing, oh, yeah, it's one. Ooh, I wonder if they're gonna go all in on this Drake. That would be funny. You talking about Drake? Alright, sure. Yeah, it feels like they might have Cradle of Safety, but, you know, we have to do this anyway. Be mana efficient, see, make them, make them use their stuff. Could be a counter as well. If it's Cradle, we can find Lantern Flare. All right, it's Cradle. Strong stuff from the opponent, but they're not hitting us too hard for damage. Well, they are hitting us kind of hard for damage. Let's see. Okay. So I think we start by sacking a Blood here. Um, I think we start by sacking a Blood. If we can find Lantern Flare or Creepy Puppeteer, that changes the turn a lot. There are a lot of cards we could find that would change things up. That doesn't change things up so much, so we're just going to attack with everybody, play Celebrants. Going to be close. That Storm Chaser Drake set up and our missing the land drop that one turn mattered quite a bit. All right, they are at nine. Get our blood. They have more Wretched Throngs? Okay, looks like only two Throngs. All right, so we've still got access to Lantern Flare as a pretty relevant card. Um, we can chump with Griff Rider as well. Potentially. We got Distracting Geist in the yard to stop blocks if that becomes relevant. Yeah, Holy Frog, I don't know. I don't put too much stock in that sort of thing. Okay, so we're going to go with... Yeah, it could be, could be Sink or Retrieval. We'll see if they have that. Alright, do I sack the blood first? Don't think there's a universe where I don't sack the blood here. So close to lethal. If they have nothing. They almost certainly have something.
Yeah, there's a chance they have more throngs in hand, it's true. Twin Blade Geist. Alright, so if they have absolutely nothing, we can go for lethal. Incredibly likely they have something. So I am going to go ahead and attack them and see what they go for. No blocks. Alright, opponent is determined to get us with the bounce here. Alright, let's see if they have Retrieval or a counter spell of any kind, and that'll get us. We could technically go for Lantern Flare, which would not lose to Retrieval. Hmm. Because we could play Twin Blade Geist? Alright, so should I be discarding something to go for Lantern Flare? I could discard Adamant Will. I think I discard Adamant Will to take one shot at Flare, and then otherwise just play Griff Rider and hope for the best. If I were going to do that, I guess I should have gone for Wedding Invitation, because now if I draw Wedding Invitation, I'm going to feel pretty silly about my life choices. Uh, the reason not to discard Geist would be because if they do have the Bounce spell, we need to have two creatures in play for Lantern Flare to work. I guess it's not true. We could actually just kill it for, for two. Alright, so Geist is the discard then. That's right. No! Alright. Unlikely that mattered if they had the bounce spell. I guess we'll find out. Syncopate's possible. Everything is possible. Many, many things are possible. Let's see what it turned out to be. Some punishment, although they have they have Lantern Bearer, so it actually doesn't matter. Oh, well, no, it doesn't matter. We go to 9. Alright, it was Lunar Rejection, so we're dead anyway. There was no winning that one. Okay, so this does not... Seem like a deck where combat tricks are fantastic. This seems like a pretty good end the festivities deck. We saw Storm Chaser Drake. They probably got some Binding Geist. We saw Lantern Bearer. We saw a bunch of Wretched Throngs. Easy end the festivities. And what's the cut on the play here? Knife. Yeah, our creatures don't really need to be bigger to get through their creatures, probably. So Knife seems like a cut. Um, Adamant Will could be a cut. We didn't see any hard removal from them. And Adamant Will's really awkward against bounce spells, so is Knife. Could just play Invitation again. Invitation's like... The life gain seems pretty pretty reasonable. Um, I still just don't think a 5-mana 3-3 flyer is very good. I don't know. It's... I mean, yeah, we can I can play a 5-mana spell and maybe block their, their Drake, but... Against their deck, which has bounce spells, and... I think we saw a counter there. I don't remember exactly. Alright, I think I like not Knife... I think I like Invitation just for life gain mostly. And I think I don't like Adam and Will very much. I think we do it like this. And I'm going to glance at their graveyard from that game. Just to remember what exactly they did. Because it's all a blur, chat. It's all a blur. Okay, we saw Siphon Essence was the only counter we saw that game. Nope. Okay. Well... Here's hoping we get some good shit going within the festivities. I guess we'll cut a... Infantry here? Twin Blade Geist is much better attacking through Wretched Throne. Okay, two drop is pretty good, as, as draws go. Just one planes, please. Ooh, okay. Hey, love planes, baby. Love planes. All right. Love seeing no trade there. Let's distract them. Very distracting. All right. Come on, play wretched throng, buddy. Circle of confinement. All right, whatever. It is what it is. Twin blade guy's pretty good in sleeping spirit as well. Ooh, okay. Getting closer to doing the thing. I'm going to probably wait one more turn before we try to do the thing to them. Because I think there's every chance they have one more Lantern Bearer or a Wretched Throng or something. Two losses, X hit. Two losses, which is good. Because we just mold in, in game two after losing game one. One more bullet in the gun. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Chad. That's the goal. 
Okay, Fleeting Spirit holding back. Looking to block, maybe? Alright, I'm ready to try casting in the festivities here, I think. Seems like about the right time to do that. Playing around Syncopate and Geist Light Snare just fine. Oh, sick. They had nothing. You love to see them having nothing. Uh, I just wouldn't assume that Mestastic. I think full control could be a thing. I don't know. Alright, they swing with Spirit. I am going to... It comes back tapped. No, it comes back under its owner's control. I still feel like we just fiercely retribute it now. Alright, they have a Cradle. So it's a race. If you're a villager, it could help in a race. Play that pre-combat, of course, for the Rich Wolf. So they have Twin Blade Geist, but no way to discard it at the moment. And it wouldn't quite kill me anyway. Okay, Cycling Chill of the Grave. Not playing another blocker, you love to see that. Going to 6 here. Could have Lunar Rejection. Yeah, Spirit also always gives them stops. I didn't even think about that, but in general, that's why I don't love thinking about stop stuff. Okay. Do I attack with both so I can suit up the Fearful Villager or the Ridge Wolf next turn? To become Aaron Gertler tonight, Jeff. That's the goal. Is this an attack with both moments? So I attack with both, they block the, the Twin Blade, they go to 4. That means they have to leave back two blockers for Villager. <sighs> They've got First Strike if they put another card in the graveyard, but not yet. Yeah, I think we go in here. I think Geist is not doing anything. If we so, if I, I guess if I go in and then we make this play, then they win if they can cast an enchantment. But we're dead to an enchantment, kind of regardless, because what enchantment are they playing? That's not removal or a plus one plus one for fleeting spirit or something. I guess they have to save blockers anyway next turn. They do have to save blockers anyway next turn. Okay, I think we go for this. And hold the land. Hold the land. Okay, flip to knight. Flipping to knight's also nice. Most spells get us here. Opponent thinking about playing around removal, realizing they can't, they're going to play another Cradle of Safety and kill me. They could also bounce back the Circle of Confinement, but that doesn't really help them. They can exile a creature, but I get a creature back, so they still can't kill me with that. I guess we'll full control for the hell of it. Usually don't like to do this, but once in a while it seems appropriate. Very good, Jungle. That's the attitude. That's the right attitude to have. Opponents. Alright, they just have a creature. That's fine. It's not an enchantment. And they are afraid. We got him spooked, chat. Okay. Lantern Flare. Am I just going to flare the spirit? If I flare the spirit, that's technically lethal, because Fearsome Werewolf needs to be blocked. So I guess we go for it. Alright, now the question is, do I play around Syncopate, or do I play around like a Bounce Spell on one of my creatures? This is lethal if I cast Flare and they have nothing. The question is, what are the things they could have and how can I play around them? They could have a Syncopate, in which case I'd want to cast this for two mana, not more. Um, they could have a way to kill one of my creatures, in which case I'd want to cast this on Geist. I guess if I cast this on Geist, I should win, yeah? We haven't seen Syncopate, it's true. Yeah, I think we just go for Flare for two mana on Geist, playing around Syncopate. Um, but if they have a Bounce Spell for one of my creatures, then 
trying to kill the Geist gets me killed because they can play out of the graveyard as an enchantment. I think we just go after Fleeting Spirit here. And I think we just cast it for... Th now they could have Geist Light Snare as well. Oh man. So close. Alright, I think I'm going to pay the, pay, the, pay the full price here. Hit the Fleeting Spirit and hope that works. Could be Retrieval. Retrieval is fine. We could also have left up enough mana to try and recast a creature. This also saves us for something like an Adamant Will. Is there a reason to attack first? I don't think so. Alright, they just had a land and now we win. Good stuff. Good stuff. If their Tomb Blade Geist were bigger, they could kill the Werewolf and then not take lethal, but they did take lethal. Whew. Uh, Rectia. Uh, I'm going to give you a 10-minute timeout for that. It's kind of no context, and it doesn't seem to have anything to do with what's going on. It's pretty negative, so you're welcome to come back, but... Uh, yeah, just generally give more context if you have something to complain about. Complaints are okay. But none of the no context complaints. All right, where are we going? <sighs> Maybe jungle. Okay. So, lacerate flesh. Lacerate flesh on the draw seems interesting. Give it they're suiting up their stuff so much. I think we cut Re reckless impulse for lacerate flesh. Do I cut ridge wolves for vampire slayers just because they have myth lunar whatever? I don't think so. I don't think that's enough of a reason. No, noob noob, I don't think the 3-3 flyer really deals with their flyers very well at all. I think it's a very clunky, slow creature. And I think we're still trying to race them. Possible Griff Rider could be worse than a random 2-drop. Um, I guess you're right, Nomad. I guess you're right. I think just having more removal is a good thing against Cradle. Oh, thanks, Anarchist Sun. Yeah, maybe last rate could just be Geist. Geist making spirits is not the worst thing. It's like we don't have very many enchantments, so it's rarely going to do that. Mm. We need to become Aaron It's really Rick, tough. Like That's the goal. I think I'm going to stick with Lacerate. And did we cut anything? We did not cut anything. Okay. We cut or we cut Reckless Impulse, which seems correct. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Jeff. That's Whew! Anarchist Sun and Charlie Soros Rex, thanks for the follow, and I missed you before 34th Nugget, but thanks to you as well. All right, some tension in the air here. We'll see. We mulled that last game, too, and we're mulling this game. Motherfucker. All right, keep six. We're not going to five here against an opponent who kept seven. We're just going to try and draw lands. All right, one more shot here. Aaron Gertler tonight, Jeff. That's the goal. This is, by the way, people were telling us to play 16 lands before because of Ragger deck. No, we do not play 16 lands in this deck. Not now, not ever. All right, we'll play it out for one more turn because it's literally the finals. Idiot Pig Boy, thanks for the follow. We have a braid. Dorothea just kind of goes away and isn't very threatening. So if we can find the mountain, we can still get into this. All right, I appreciate our opponent's commitment to value here. Come on, some lands. Okay, that that plays, that plays. Yes, noob noob. I, I'm closer to playing 18 lands than 16, and I'm quite serious about that. If they have Cradle of Safety, that's fine. If they want to trade off, that's also fine. Still in it. Cobbled Lancer. All right, we didn't see that one in games one or two, but we were going to trade no matter what, so... It is what it is. Lantern Bear is fine. We drew Lantern Flare, which is not especially helpful at this point in the game. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe they'll take their whole turn to tap out and put Dorothea on something that will liberate it. That'd be great. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, these such assistants are really good for them. All right, found the mountain. We are in this game, suddenly. I think this is just going to be combatants here. Just be mana efficient. Yeah, we're obviously not attacking with it, but we're just going to try and be mana efficient. They're actually, they actually missed their, their fourth land drop. I can't remind. They, they hit it. Still playing magic. As long as you're playing magic, there's always a chance. Trade off a Stitch Assistant. We have Lantern Flare is rough, but I think we got to do it. And if we like force a Cradle of Safety out of them and we can abrade that later, that's also fine. We're not out of it yet. If we find the mountain, we could be right back in it for sure. Wretched Throng is fine. Okay, found a Plains. So we get to go... Ridge Wolf. And I could Flare the Throng now. They just go and get another one. I think we just pass. Yeah, this is awkward because now Lunar Ejection kills us, but I think Lunar Ejection was going to kill us no matter what. I think we actually block the Assistant and then hit it with Lantern Flare. Let's hit the Assistant with Lantern Flare first. Can't be siphoned, could be bounced, could be cradled again. All right. Nice. Okay, that's gonna have to get braided. Wedding invitation's pretty cool, actually. Is it? I don't know if it's actually enough. So I could also, imp I think I need to impulse hit a mountain. Hmm, Dorothea makes things really tough, actually. If I don't play a creature... Yeah, if I don't play a creature, I'm just dead to Dorothea, but I also need to play in a braid. I don't think there's any way for me to do all these things at once. I guess I need to hold a braid. And try to play it when they enchant something. Okay, impulse it is. I don't think there's any way to win the game, but we're gonna try. And the festivities would have been funny at certain points, and now we're dead because we didn't hit the mountain for a braid. Okay. All right, now on to the final boss. We got all of our mulligans out of the way in that round, I hope. Eh, a little brutal, but that's magic. I have uh, I have lost more important games than that to similar draws, but not many, not many. All right. Let's roll right back into it. Yeah, their deck was pretty strong. Cradle was good. Would like to go back into the black-green bracket if that's an option, but we'll see. We actually have not played against a single red-black vampire deck today, which is funny. I have heard like five of them yesterday. Wouldn't mind hitting red-black vamps. Although Vampire's Vengeance is scary. Yeah, it's frustrating, but it's literally fundamental to what makes magic a game. Um, I mean, I'm slightly tilted now, Histeas. I think the biggest thing that keeps me from tilting is just trying to literally have no expectations. Just, like, I didn't come in, I came in today expecting to go something like 3 and 3. I'm 6 and 2, great, extra gems, extra people viewing the stream, extra people following. If I win, it's amazing, but if not, you know, try again next time. And going 6 and 2 is heartening, at least. It's like evidence that I'm you know, good at this thing. We need okay, would love a planes here, but this hand is certainly serviceable, difficult. especially with the knife. Oh, it looks to be contemplating a mulligan. They got cool sleeves, wow. It's honestly a really metal atmosphere going on here. Krusty Craig and Krem Flash, thanks for being two of the followers who are examples of exactly what I was talking about. Really just trying to build a good stream and have fun with people here. Nice, third land, Pog. Twin Blade Geist plus Knife is sweet. Lantern Flare is just generally a sweet card. We're eventually going to find a Plains. Gift of Fangs is totally fine. 
That's a bl that's a land I can discard to blood. Sick. Take four. Belligerent Guest is totally fine. Falconrath Celebrants is pretty good. Okay. Does Falconrath Celebrants mean I want to not be discarding this blood here? We definitely attack. Absolutely no world in which we're not attacking here. Yeah, I think we just attack. We see what happens, but we're extremely lucky to play out the fourth land here. We can also just discard Twin Blade Geist. Nice. All right, love that block. We are here to grind. Yeah, with Falconrath Celebrants coming down, I feel pretty comfortable uh, discarding Geist, because if I do hit a bunch of lands in a row, we still have the Celebrants to get rid of them. Blood Tide Harvester, sure. Classic Vow Experience. Ragged Recluse. All right, Bones deck looks pretty good. Let's see what we can do here. Nice. There we go. So opponents likely be able to make another blood kill celebrants, but we've got Lantern Flare coming up after that. And a bunch of grind. There it is. Here we go, yep. Strong card, the Harvester. We end up up a blood and down three mana on the exchange. Ooh, they have the land blood? Nope. Invitation. All right, so this is gonna be definitely not invitation. I think we just flare the socialite for four here. We could flare it for three and hold the land to discard to blood. That's another option. Mm, I think the extra life seems really good right now. And I think we're going to probably draw plenty of lands this game. Hopefully Flare Bly has a lot of time. They could easily just jam Celebrants and get me, but... They did miss a land drop somewhere along the line. Oh, I should change the record. Let's do that. No! Alright, a little disappointing, but it's not the fastest clock in the world. So, you know, if all the four drops they could play, that one is pretty acceptable. Ballista Watcher seems tasty. I guess we go Invitation first. Yeah, I don't really want to equip Watcher with a knife here. Olivia's Attendance is also really good if they burn their removal on this Ballista Watcher. Okay. Let's just hope they don't have, like, a Braid and Bleed Dry. Uh, Decklist, no. The way that the way that ability works is that they, um, they just immediately get the thing. Yeah, you don't have, you don't have a chance to do that. All right, let's try again. If they have bleed dried for this, then belligerent guest plus knife plus invitation good to also buy some time. But I'm hoping they don't have anything for attendance. But we'll see. Their deck is six and two, it would seem, or something like that. They might have spells, or they might have just been trying to like figure out whether they were going to discard this blood or not. Okay, you love to see this. One time, no Henrika Dominathi. Uh-oh. They're hovering. Uh, makes it more likely noob noob. People do make mistakes, though. I am, I'm... Not making too many assumptions about, th I, you know, if they have a hero's downfall, there's nothing I can do about it anyway, so. Just trying to stay chill and not assume much of anything. Yes, yeah, so they were holding extra lands. They've just been, like, really trying to not play their fifth land out, which is a little intense, but whatever. Blood Petal Celebrant is hilarious to see. Love seeing that one. 
Digging is very good, yes. Okay. All right, I think we just gained six life while the gaining is good. They can't block it anyway, but I just want the six life while Olivia's defense is alive. Make five million blood. And don't see any particular reason to... Let's see, could they have a pump spell for this? They could have Undying Malice, I guess. I'll we'll just kill it now. Yeah, we'll do it now we have lifelink. Yep, never play another land. That's what Olivia's Attendance reads. As soon as it deals damage, you can never play another land that game, but, you know, it does it in a more artful way where you get lots of cute tokens. Opponent is extremely committed to not playing their fifth land. <laughs> uh, yes, no, wait, what? No, the, the likelihood that the difference between gaining seven life and nine life or whatever, um, versus just my Olivia's attendance actually gaining some life while it's alive is, is so, so big. Also, going to nine would require me to, like, I don't know, equip ceremonial knife or play three more lands. It's just a, it's a lot of assumptions. All right, desperation mode opponent here. Love to see it. So I think we go ahead, just ping Epic here, jam a creature. Actually, the Epic here can't block. I think we just jam two creatures here. We're at 12. Uh, you, you'd need, yeah. Yes, no, wait, well, you'd have to give up three spells in order to do that. Alright, so we hit them for some damage. If they can kill Livy's Attempts right now, we lost out on some value, but we still have 15 blood. And it seems pretty hard to lose with 15 blood. And it's too late for Purveyor to save them at this juncture, I think. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. If they have the Blood Vial Purveyor, I guess we might actually be in some trouble. Yes, Girthy Dribblet does have Menace. Yeah, Histeus, I've, I've actually had that happen to me twice, I think. Oh wait, no, once, once I was the person with the Purveyor, uh, and then once I was the person with the Attendance, and then they dropped the Purveyor after I attacked and it was terrible. All right. Yeah, I'd be kind of impressed if they managed to build a deck with nothing over four, but maybe. Just no Falcon Rat Celebrants and no uh, big Vampire Bombs. I guess some of the big Vampire Bombs are cheap, but no Olivia's. Markov Retribution, yep. No Death Touch Vampires for our opponent here. If they had a Flame Blessed Bolt, that eh, wouldn't do anything. Okay. They are keeping it tight. They are definitely keeping it tight. But we actually just win, so it's actually not being kept tight. Everything has Menace. Everything has Menace. They have a creature. They have a Voldaren Epicure. It still wouldn't help because everything has Menace. Okay. Nice. Whoo! All right. Vampires. Is this finally the time that we put in the Vampire Slayers? I believe it's finally time to put in the Vampire Slayers. We didn't necessarily see much they'd be useful against, but they've waited all draft. The time has come. Okay, anything else? Adamant Will seems a lot better than Sure Strike. Lacerate Flesh does not seem particularly good against their deck with nothing that costs more than 4 mana. 
Wedding Invitation seems better than Reckless Impulse on the draw. Ceremonial Knife might be worse than Last Rate Flesh, actually. Definitely not Festivities. We don't really care about their 1-1s very much. Um, I could cut Ceremonial Knife and just put in a third Slayer. Or I could put in Last Rate Flesh. Um, what seems better here? Yeah, we're cutting Knife. We had Last Rate Flesh or Slayer. Flesh is nice for getting rid of, like, Blood Craze Socialite, I guess. They asked, Goonspoon. They asked and we answered. Yes, yes, yes. Flesh for Scavenger. Ah, we have double Belligerent Guests. We have, uh, we have a good amount of stuff that can block Scavenger. But it's possible that this many Vampire Slayers would be too many. Yeah, this is going to be pretty grindy. I think I like Flesh on the draw. All right. Let's see. Still got to win one of these two. And their deck seems pretty pretty solid. Okay, I'm into it. Lantern Flare again. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. It's here, chat. The moment has come. They missed their two drop. The time is now, our place is here. Do you hear the slayers sing, singing the song of angry humans? Do 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 Curving out. Cute magic card opponent. I hope that one works out for you. Making the plays. Love curving out, boys. Blister Watcher getting bled. Oh, well, Hisaias, I think when Vampire Slayer dies to Gift of Fangs, it grows fangs and then has to slay itself. I think it's very flavorful. Deep lore. We're going deep here, yeah. No, let's not, let's not put pro vampire comments into this set. That's like, that just turns it into Midnight Hunt Part Two. All right, scavenger's fine. I think we'll be lantern flaring that one out of the way. Ooh, opponent wants to wants to party. I am here to party, opponent. Let's go. You want a party? It can be party time. Note to self that we're casting Reckless Impulse off two mountains next turn, because we have more red in hand, but might get two white spells. Not getting cocky here. Vampire's Vengeance, okay. That's a one for one. That's fine. They are continuing to be quite aggressive. Can they block Ballista Watcher? Nope. A Braid? A Braid seems good. Ah, uh, Fierce Retribution also seems pretty good, though. All right, second socialite is fine. Oh, they have uh, malice. No, they just have a blood. Okay, geist will be nice later, but for now, let's just retribute them. Well, the retributing is good. I think we play the seventh land here with Ballista Watcher out. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, it does just stay. So we've done that a couple times, and it's always been funny. All right, it's not over yet, but they need to find a lot of their spells kind of... Ooh, they had to discard a spell. You love to see it. And a lot of their spells suck in Splista Watcher. That one doesn't. That one That one is adequate in Splista Watcher. Lacerate Flesh. Ooh, baby. Oh, baby. They did play land five. Lacerate Flesh is ready to party. Go ahead and play a Ragged Recluse, why don't you? Play a Blood Petal Celebrant. Play a Voldaren Epicure. Okay. Well, we can we can chill. Mini, it, yeah, it's Escape the Wilds plus a Burn spell. Ooh, that works. That works. I'll take that one. Ooh, that one is also pretty nice. Jeez. Unfortunately, it could die to Harvester, so I think we just got a last rate Harvester here. Oh man, incredibly tempting to play Puppeteer Geist. Should I just play? I should just play Puppeteer Geist, right? It forces a block. They don't have removal at two mana instant. They would have to have exactly the human removal spell. If they have the human removal spell, then I end up being kind of sad, but I think this has got to be worth going for. I think we're just going to force the chump here. Hey! Hey! Alright, alright. Sanguine Statuette. That's... Oddly, it dodges Lacerate Flesh. It's kind of hard to find creatures that dodge Lacerate Flesh, but they found one. Good stuff. Still, seems rough for our opponent here. My executive, uh, my, my, uh, my view on this matter is that it seems rough for our opponent. Oh, wait. This is actually lethal? I forgot, I forgot about Puppeteer's ability. <laughs> Sick. Did we, did we get us? Did we get them? Protor! Daybreak Combatants! God. Who gets the MVP award for this deck? Woo! Get him! <laughs> back on the back on the train, baby. Back on the train. Finally. Finally. All right. Oh man. Everybody was the MVP today. Every card in this deck was so good today. Griff Rider won us that game against all of the green black groundy stuff. Distracting Geist crushed that flourishing hunter player. The Ridgewolves were solid. Ceremonial Knife didn't do much. Ceremonial Knife gets the didn't do much award. Wedding invitations were sometimes lethal. Livy's attendants absolutely carried games on their backs. Creepy Puppeteer was a beating. We misplayed Ballista Watcher and it still carried us in that last game, dealt like 16 damage. 12, something like that. Lantern Flare was incredible. Didn't need that whole Breaker Horror after uh, after all, chat. Reckless Impulse tied the whole room together. But I think, I think overall MVP award, I think overall MVP award for like exceeds expectations did, did just so much more than people thought it was going to do. Has got to be Daybreak Combatants. The card people wanted to cut. This car just slammed home some games, and of course got the final got the final points. Tonight, That's the goal. Uh, Goon the Spoon, I don't know what you're talking about vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Lantern Flare. Lantern Flare does not hit players. If Lantern Flare hit players, that would be way, way too good. <laughs> yes, we passed Holebreaker uh we opened it in pack two, and we could have tried to pivot into blue from white, but I'm glad we didn't. Whew. Oh, wow. All right, can we... <laughs> Unruly Oddish should have drafted red-white aggro, but uh, hurry up. Hurry up, Oddish. 
Oh, no, the Olivia's Attendant sleeves all the way up here? How am I ever going to get there? All right, well, I guess it's time to start making our way towards the Olivia's Attendant sleeve in their honor. The wedding invitation was also great. Everything was great. The deck was great. You were great, chat. Thank you so much. The bad one, thanks for the follow. Whew! Okay, well, I guess uh, a lot of the streams going forward are going to be dedicated to Innistrad Championship Prep, or, uh, uh, sorry, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Champs. That's fun to say. Let's go buy cosmetics. Right, right, we have to buy cosmetics. More follows. Thank you so much, Ikkyo and Cipras. Oh, wait, I want to get a picture of that deck. Can I go back and get a picture of that deck? Is it too late? Uh, I can get one from a stream capture. I can get a picture? I can still get a picture. I need to claim the prize. Let's not forget to claim the prize. Alright, getting my screenshot on here. No, not you. Not you, knife. Come on. Tammy's gonna be mad if I take a bad looking screenshot, so we gotta be pretty precise. And now I get to go watch Spider Man, chat. I hear it's really good. It's gonna be such a lovely Sunday. Alright, cosmetics. Cosmetics. Haha, <laughs> Vampire Slayers. Sorry, Vampire Slayers. It's. It's fine. We'll stick to our main main deck. <laughs> Uh, Vampire Slayers get to be a uh, Rookie of the Year, maybe? Oh, we should claim the prize. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> they, would, they would give it to me, Mad Leggings. I'm confident they would give it to me, but... Alright, we have our gems. They're not gonna, they're not gonna ban me from the Pro Tour because I didn't claim the prize. <laughs> okay. Oh, I should have taken the screenshot of that screen, too. I, I am new to this. I'm new to winning chat. I don't win very often. God, I don't like either of these emotes. And I already have this sleeve. And Oko was a miserable card. We're not doing that. Uh, sleeves? Olivia sleeve. Okay, this is just so cute. This is just so cute, chat. We gotta take the Witcher Fox. Get Fox. I don't do pets, so I'm not gonna get the bundle. Black Lotus Exquisite sleeve. I don't have the Black Lotus sleeve yet. That's such a classic. All right, get the Black Lotus Exquisite Sleeve. Let's jam. Spending money. Spend that money. Are right, any avatars that I want? Kiora is actually a good blue-green ramp avatar. Let's grab Kiora. It might be Kiora sometimes. Davriel's got a good mustache. Gotta get Davriel. Thanks, Charlie. That'll do. Oh, actually, Fralius has a sick eye patch. Gotta love the eye patch. Noob noob, sometimes I do. I, I mostly don't, but once in a while I get in the mood to be something else for a while. I like the Helen Elena avatar, so I've been Helen Elena lately. Any more sleeves? Oh, the Dracula lands. The Dracula lands are sick. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. And, yeah, these easily. Yum! Uh, and that is it. I wish they give you discounts on the bundles. If you've already bought part of the bundle. Markov Styles? Are any of these cards ones that were even in our deck? We didn't even play any of these cards. Do we play some of these cards? Olivia's Attendance. Alright, we gotta get Olivia's Attendance. We'll put Epicure and Anji here. Yes, Noob Noob, the Neon Dynasty lands are extremely sick, and I will probably be playing with those for quite a while. Um, well done to the artists and the people who, I guess, commissioned the idea in the first place. Okay. Um, that's going to be it. We bought, we've bought. we gone on the spending spree. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in for the, uh, for the win. I did not expect this to happen, but I guess if you take enough shots, eventually, eventually you got to hit. And uh, yeah, so for the next few streams, we're probably going to be starting to... I mean, I guess Neon Dynasty is hard to practice for because there's going to be a new set coming out. But, uh, you know, we'll probably look into Alchemy. 
We'll be playing the new Decathlon events when they come out. I've already played these a bunch, but we're definitely super into the Decathlon and playing some Arena Cube at the end of it. And uh, yeah, gotta go, gotta go eat some breakfast and just kind of pop off by myself. Um, Heisenberg, thank you for the follow. All right, and if, if you want to see all that, of course, you should follow the stream. I bet a couple of you aren't following, and you really should be. We're almost at 6K. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, man, leggings, I, I guess it does. Um, mostly the problem is my green screen is, like, literally here. So I have no room to pop off. I, I, here, I can I can move the green screen. We can do this. Here, I'll give you a true pop-off. Let's go! Ah. Okay, there's the pop-off. We did it. Manatee, thank you for the follow. Whoo! All right. 3D now, 3D chat. <laughs> yeah, I actually just live in a room with green walls. There's nothing in here. It's just an empty room with green walls. <laughs> All right, I am gonna get going now. Let's see who's still playing. Who's still playing who I can raid? Do a celebration raid for somebody. I know Sam made day too. Is Sam still playing? I hope Sam's still playing. Numat is not doing this. Uh, we got some decathlon people. Is anybody still playing in the event chat? Is anybody still playing in the event? Everybody is playing in the decathlon, it would seem. Darkest Mage? Scotty Nada. Scotty Nada's in the event? 5-0? Alright, let's raid Scotty Nada. I'm not even super familiar with them, but... They popped up as an option for me. They seem to be drafting Innistrad still. All right, we will raid Scotty, and I will go watch Scotty's stream myself later and check it out. All right, everybody, go cheer on Scotty, and I'll uh, see y'all in the Pro Tour, or before that.